It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anako's here. Alex Lindsay's here. And re just returned from the Apple Park campus, Micah Sargent. Yes, we're going to take a look at the Apple event yesterday. Uh, in fact, go deep on the Vision Pro. I'm a little more skeptical than these guys are. We'll also talk about new iOS, new Mac OS, new TV OS and watch OS, plus all new Mac hardware. It's a jam-packed episode next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 873, recorded Tuesday, June 6th, 2023. Bubble Lover Lay. This episode of Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by ACI Learning. IT skills are outdated in about 18 months, so you should stay ahead of the curve and future-proof your business's competitiveness with customizable, entertaining training. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for more information on a free two-week trial for your team. And by ZipRecruiter. Did you know that hiring can take up to 11 weeks on average? Do you have that time to wait? Of course not. Stop waiting and start using ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter helps you find qualified candidates for all your roles fast. And right now, you can try it free at ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. And by Melissa. More than 10,000 clients worldwide rely on Melissa for full-spectrum data quality and ID verification software. Make sure your customer contact data is up to date. Get started today with 1,000 records clean for free at melissa.com slash twit. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Apple news. And oh boy, is there Apple news. Alex Lindsay's here from officehours.global and 090.media. Hello, Alex. I think you're drooling. Hello, hello. I think he's drooled is showing. A little excited. Wipe your mouth. It looks pretty good. <laughs> we, had, we, we, uh, we, I think we had over 100 people in there watching yesterday yeah. for a second a year. And we were all, everyone was just, there was half of us were like, or, you know, half of the group was like, oh, it's never going to work. And no one's ever going to buy that. And the other half was like, I can't wait. Where do I order? Where do I put my credit card down? So yeah. it was a split yeah. crew, split yeah. crew. Uh, Mr. Andy Anako, WGBH. Boston, he's got his view master. No, I'm uh, I, I'm under I'm under NDA, so there are some things I can't talk about. But as soon as like the the, I'm I can see his eyes. Yes, he's a little uncanny. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, I've, I've, I've got I've gone for the hellhound sort of effect on that place. thing. You can only see the whites of the eyes. <laughs> yes. And that you, you is, tell me if I look like a dork in this, didn't you? Wouldn't you? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Jason Snell is on assignment. He's uh, he's down on the tennis courts. Mm. At, uh, he's the petting dinosaurs someplace. He's petting dinosaurs. Indeed. But we're very pleased that Micah came home. I did. I ran home. <laughs> Micah Sargent sitting in the chair. Good to see you. You were there yesterday. I was there yesterday. Um, I did want to say um, a nice gentleman. Oscar says hello, Leo. And thank you. For everything. Oscar the Grouch? Uh, I, I, if I can real quick, I was uh, in the elevator about to uh, make my way back to the car. And this guy from across the elevator suddenly l does a double take, I see. <laughs> and he points at me. And then he goes, twit. That's all he said. <laughs> twit. And I said, yes. And he goes, for, what, forgive me, forgive. I said, Micah. He goes, oh, Micah Sergeant. Oh, where's Leo? And I said. <laughs> Something people of Apple have been asking for yeah, the last 22 yes. years. Um, and then he was very kind and said that he and his kids watch all the oh, shows. Nice. And they Hi, him, Oscar. So. Hello, it's great Oscar. great to see you. I hope you're having fun uh, down there at WWDC, the 2023 edition. Yeah, we covered the uh, keynote. I did it because uh, we had planned to do it with you, and then you got a last minute invitation. But that gave me a great opportunity to bring people up onto the stage from the club. How was that? It was great. It was the, it, you know, it was Kev Brewer, it was Joe Esposito <laughs> and Joe from Brooklyn. It was the usuals, but, uh, but it was really, I thought quite fun. I thought they did a very good job. And, um, and what was interesting, I was talking with one of the producers afterwards and they said, he said, they knew the rhythm of how we do these keynotes, like when to talk, oh, really? when not to talk. Yeah, it was really, it was, <laughs> it was true. They watched a few, I think. That's cool. So, uh, if I were a smart, canny podcaster <laughs> i would save one more thing for the end okay as if it is one more thing as if it were one more thing yeah. just like tim cook did uh-huh 
we were sitting here. I'm sure you were. Oh yeah. Saying, okay, you've gone an hour, you've gone an hour and a half. I think <laughs> it was getting long. Uh, and actually at one point I was really wondering, maybe they're not going to introduce this. I, we had that feeling too, uh, sitting there thought maybe it just wasn't time. <laughs> maybe wow. something went wrong. I mean, that would be really a big deal given how much publicity, but they never said they were going to introduce it. Exactly. It's, you know, Bill, Tim's been saying AR, AR, AR for a while. So, you know, we know he was very interested in this. And before the event uh, started, uh, there was a moment where both Craig Federighi and Tim Cook were on stage. And what gave me the hint that they were going to was right before the video that everybody else got to see from out in the world saw, uh, Tim Cook said something along the lines of, this is going to be an historic day. Uh -huh. I love that he used the an historic day. An historic day. Um, <laughs> yes. And then that's whenever the video started the part that was streamed live uh, elsewhere and so i thought okay definitely at the end but then it just kept going and going and i'm looking over at jason snell who's sitting next to me and um are they going yeah they they won more thinged uh when they won more thing they also one more thing the price and this was the reaction <laughs> from uh from the crowd oh i'm glad someone captured Apple that Vision Pro <laughs> starts at 34.99 <laughs> Folks, that is not a that is not a sound effect. That was a uh, oh. yeah. that was the real sound in the audience. That, that was that was so intense that I really, I honestly had to reach out to a friend of mine who was there and say, "Did that really happen?" He said, "Yes, it yes, did. it was." If anything, it was even louder. <laughs> we yeah. didn't hear it, of course, because Apple once again, even in in the absence of COVID, mm -hmm. because you were all there, you were unmasked, you didn't get special. Apple. Uh, yeah, there weren't tests this time. Fly, fly masks, no like tests. Yeah. Uh, they still decided to do it recorded. So tell me how it happened. To, the, you're sitting in the press, from what I could tell from your tweets and others, you were kind of in the back. Yeah. So this time, because there were developers there, they got the front seats. Yeah. And then there was a small row of some of the blessed Apple employees who got to be there because their teams were kind of featured. And then right behind that row was the press. And so we were near the back, but it also was, it kind of gave the press the opportunity to be in the shade shade um so we were sort of comfortably sitting although right where we were it was with the sun but anyway you're sitting there and you're looking up at the stage and everything's getting ready they're playing that music you can see the huge screen and what they did in the past and what they did again this year is tim cook and uh, tim cook took the stage and talked briefly and he was saying he was wearing a light blue shirt and i noticed that oh yeah because there was a different shirt in the video yes he did not attempt to match his outfit yeah there was no matching there <laughs> um and you know they talked for a little bit craig said a few things and sort of joked about uh the presentation and then it kicked off there was no after with that uh as soon as it was over then we all kind of looked towards our press contacts the our sort of pr people were off to the side and said where do we go next and then they shuffled us <laughs> off from there yeah um alex you were really uh you said i was i, I frankly was surprised because i completely disagree with you you said that they're never going to do a live perf uh, performance again that this is this is you know so good and i grant you that i mean they got a lot of information into two hours and six minutes but they're never going to do a live event again yeah i think that's really a shame because i think you really i oh, feel like you really I'm lose so well yeah you like to live in a bubble i guess i miss because <laughs> no, you don't go out it's, much it's no but it, you, people keep on saying i don't understand why the energy you know google and microsoft have lost so much energy in their events it's not that they've lost energy. It's that Apple's is so t much tighter with so much more data and so much, it's so much more visual interest that when you go back to a stage, it's like, it's like going from the highway to a gravel, you know, I think you could driveway. do a, a hybrid yeah. where you had people. I want to see sure. the executives. I want to see their energy and enthusiasm. I want to see, and we didn't see it, Tim Cook wearing a Vision Pro. Yes. Uh, yeah. And and I think you could do that and introduce videos, because I understand it's a much more content-rich way to present it and, and then much more clear. But I do think you lose something from not having people on stage. I really oh. do. And I think Apple's at risk of becoming... They already kind of look like this. In fact, even building Apple Park with the, everything facing in, they already look like a company that doesn't participate with its, if, you know, they're on a, they're in Elysian fields up there somewhere. If, if uh, Google and Microsoft are doing physical events in three years, I'll be really surprised. I think it's over. Yeah. Like the, the idea of the keynote is done. 
you know, it's, you can, you put a fork in it. <laughs> like it's, yeah. Maybe, you know, if Apple, Steve Apple Jobs were still crushing. here, there would be no question that you would want. No, no, he's stage. the one that brought it forward. You have to be, but you have to be Steve Jobs or Mark Benioff from sales, Mark Benioff from Salesforce, by the way. I don't understand anything he talks about, but he's amazing at talking about it. Like, yeah. like his, 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 you know, and he's trained, you know, trained by Tony Robbins and, and just um, incredible, their, their entire staff. So if you're at that level and you're willing to spend two hours a week being trained, uh, then, then I think that doing uh, keynotes makes a lot of sense for you, but none of these executives are doing that. And all of it is just painful to watch people who are I untrained, if they're not good at it. Yeah. stripping through things, reading teleprompters, even right. Apple, when, you know, when Steve was gone, it was the, the magic was gone in that process because they're not actors. You know, Steve had something that they didn't have. Steve made the key, keynote a keynote because he was so good at it, yeah. you know, but the thing is, is that that was like, you know, that was a, a I'd rather see a live, individual. a live rock show than a perfect canned performance. I'd rather yeah, see but, a yeah. Broadway I, show I, I, than a perfect sure, sure, movie. But, 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 but that, those are incredible, generally talented incredible people, musicians that are very yeah. talented and, pra- yeah. and spent thousands of hours getting good at it. The executives are not those people there. It, it, it's more like watching a live show of someone who just learned how to play the guitar you know, like, like three weeks ago. And that's not <laughs> super exciting. You know, like, you know, well, it's, it, you know, and that's what they look like. What, that's what executives look like when they go out on stage is like a kid who just learned how to play the guitar and trying to play you Mary, Mary had a little lamb. You know, it's just, it's really pain. I've watched literally thousands of sessions. Okay. <laughs> so I think that's part but, of it. But, but on the other hand, like this isn't Las Vegas. This is really is energy engineers and product managers explaining this thing they've been working on for the past seven years. It's okay if they don't land the triple jump off the, off the, uh, off the trampoline. You know, it's, I had to have to, had to say that maybe the, uh, biggest like cognitive disconnect I had was like, wow, I'm seeing pictures of like an audience of people watching a video together on a screen. Yeah. Like if I, I mean, and I, I know that people didn't come, the people who traveled to go see it didn't go to see it uh, to, to watch the video. It was because, okay, maybe there's, there's going to be a demo area. And also I have the ability to talk to people afterward, but Oh my goodness. If, if you didn't, if you didn't spend, if you were not like within one hour's travel time of that, of that venue and you flew like <laughs> six hours to again, watch what was a very, very stilted canned presentation with really very, it, it was, you're right. It was very professionally done. There were no trip ups. There was no stumbling. There was no like uh, pauses as, Oh, we thought that he would be able to cross from the right left stage to, to the center stage more quickly than that. But on the, on the other hand, it was like watching a video game walkthrough in many ways. And, and I, that again, it's, it's okay because this is just a product demo. This is not supposed to be showbiz, but uh, I got, all right. We don't I have to go on and on. I, we I, got, I, only I, got I, a, we only got a two hour say, show. Let me just, let me just say <laughs> one point about that is that as someone who's done a couple thousand of these, I can tell you that that little, like they just walked to the wrong part of the stage. That's like two weeks of meetings. And that's why a company, once they go into records, I understand. we don't look at enough, back. enough, yeah. right. <laughs> they're going to probably do it recorded from now on. I think there's something lost. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, I'm going to be grumpy today. You did not get to try it on, Micah Sargent. I did not. Uh, the most that I got to do was walk into a room where there was this sort of center table and there were two headsets on uh, poles. This reminds <laughs> me a lot of when the iPhone came out. And <laughs> yes. You, you couldn't really, you couldn't really go near it. And you just see this animation playing on the front screen. Um, is this your TikTok or is uh, this? No, I. Somebody else's TikTok. It, oh, the, yeah, I guess it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, it's, it's our TikTok. Yeah, it's our TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> this is here's the, your, here's your video from our uh, Slack uh, channel. Very, very crowded. How many of them did they have there? Uh, they had, I believe, well, I guess it's double. So it was uh, six around the table. And I wonder, you know, they're doing these. Um, there's a there's a close up of it. They're doing these demos for people yesterday and today. I imagine because it's stretched out so far that there are a handful of them. There are not only are there a handful yeah. of them, but what is important to understand is that much like the first iPhone, where if you push the wrong button, everything fell apart. Yeah. That is what we are seeing with these headsets. These headsets. So people who are, are doing the demos are saying very guy. Well, highly guided. Yes. There's another part to this, which I should mention, which, is, and I think this is a 
big problem for it is you have to set it up. You have to have your face shot mm -hmm. with the with the uh, with the device, the mm -hmm. Vision Pro, but also your ears scanned with your iPhone. You have to have your face scanned with the iPhone. And right now, they don't even have that process fully baked in yet. I can't. I cannot stress enough how much this is. This is why it's coming out next year. Is that it's not. It's yeah. it's not there yet. Uh, right now, they're doing it with an iPhone. They're not. You don't actually do the setup process with the headset itself. Itself, you do it with an iPhone that then pipes that information into the headset. And uh, the Lance Ulanoff was one of the folks who uh, was able to try it and I think did a really good job of detailing the experience a little more than I've seen from some folks. They have a special uh, device that people who make lenses for glasses. Zeiss you, makes the lenses. Zeiss. But you have to get your uh, particular prescription. Yes. And so they, they, had, they had a, 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 an optometrist That's what it is, testing yeah. machine. To figure out what to put pop in, and they do this all. It's almost like uh, yeah. assembly line. Huh? Assembly line, yes, yeah. exactly. And so you don't see what's happening behind the scenes. Then you go in; it's there for you to put on. Uh, another thing is that they didn't show this. You don't see this in the videos. You don't see this. I didn't see this in the photos that I was able to capture. But there is also a strap that goes over the head uh, to help add support. It's interesting that they're not showing that. Um, I don't know if that means that eventually they hope they won't have to have that or what, or if it's an optional. Strap Strap that's in the you know in the eventual box, but there's all this stuff that's kind of happening behind the scenes. The right reason now that I think seeing. that's they kind did. of important is because one of the oh hey we happen to have one <laughs> oh, yes. uh, right here. Thank you, Anthony, for bringing yours in. Uh, one of the reasons I think it's important is because one of the use cases might be to have this at an Apple store to let people try it or mm -hmm. put it in an Ikea showroom to let people do that thing that Alex Lindsay thinks everybody wants to do, which <laughs> is place furniture in their house. But if the setup is so lengthy and, and personalized, by the well, way, it even has iris recognition yes. so that it yeah. knows it's you when you put it on. Uh, it is a very personalized device. It's not something that you could just have in a mass market situation. Yeah, and I think, part least, of, yeah. and well, we should say everything I'm saying is about this. We don't know what five years or 10 years or exactly. 20 years down the road they'll be. But I have to say, as far as I could tell, for reading a whole bunch of stuff and looking at a lot of videos, A plus in technological innovation. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about some of the features. Really, something only an Apple could do. Uh, in, fact, no, in fact, Meta hasn't done it. HTC hasn't done it. Nobody's done this. Uh, one. Two, uh, I think in, in, in terms of performance of delivering a product with that's amazing they've done a plus but i cannot help but point out that ergonomically this is a solid f that that people oh, no. are not looking to strap screens on their faces and so it, well so what happens when you develop something so cool it's almost like they made the world's best i don't know submersible submarine and it's like oh this is amazing but it's just not a it's not something people are looking for. You disagree, Andy? Uh, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's an F. I mean, the the thing is, the ergonomics this, are not my, good. My, my 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 over my overall take on this is that this is not the machine that Apple wanted to show off. This is the they just got impatient. They stopped waiting for the display technology to become small enough, compact enough, and to do what they wanted to do. Uh, to uh, to to make the device they wanted to make so they decided we're going to make something that is a very conventional looking familiar the device will be familiar to people who have been using uh, vr headsets for the past five or six years uh and we will simply move on from there after demonstrating that we know how to run these displays we know how to get enough detail that you can read text pretty much at any size no matter where you put the window in the virtual space that lag is not going to be a problem and that as far as comfort goes, it's going to be as comfortable as such a device can possibly be. And I do notice they, they never mentioned points. the weight. They never mentioned well, the fans. The, the, <laughs> the, well, OK, but the people OK, the people getting back to like I, we, Marquez we've Bradley reading. said it was very heavy. Yeah, and he's and got a, most of the he's people, got a pretty strong neck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, one would think most of the most of the people that I read who got the demos, a they said that the setup was actually very very quick for for what it was doing. It wasn't like very very cumbersome. Uh, they also mentioned specifically that one of the things that Apple was admitting to was that they were still working on that interface between the device and your head. Uh, they had a, a limited number of sizes available to make sure that things fit correctly to people's heads, but they were working on by ship date having so many of these different variations. Yeah, one of the things you'll do is have your fit. face scanned and they will custom mold a front piece for you. 
Yeah. So and that's another reason you're gonna yeah. not gonna see these, see yeah. these in a mass the, market and the, situation. And, and and the other thing is regarding the fan that most of the people I've that again that I've been reading and the one person I talked to said that you really couldn't hear the fan. So okay, that's fine. It's it's good they have a fan because otherwise I, I, I wouldn't say F. It's, it's, it's F. It's F compared to what uh, it's you. But you are you do have it right on the money. We've been talking about this for for a long time. That this is still. I mean, in I'm, general, VR I'm jo- headsets. I'm, jo- are, I'm joking. I'm joking yeah. about this, but I mean, he's boy, putting on his view you, master. To, to to put this, yeah, to put on this this, you this don't really wear that. big ski yeah. goggle thing yeah. is a really big thing. And I think it was kind. It's kind of adorable that they came up with like the eye view, saying maybe it'll be okay if we have a a lenticular screen that will make people be able to see your eyes behind it. Well, there's another, that's how desperate uh, they are. Totally dystopian kind of and weird thing. They showed uh, a father taping a video tape, a uh, 3d stereoscopic tape of his kid blowing out the candles. Yeah, that's great. Except all I'm seeing as a kid is yeah. creepy eyed dad. <laughs> everyone, everyone I'd spoke yeah. to did not, uh, no one that I spoke to had a positive reaction to that uh, idea yeah. of having to wear it. Why we, do you capture the I video? think we don't I live th- in a I, world where we want to distance ourselves more from people. We go yeah. to movies, not we ha- look, I have a credible movie theater in my house. If I want to go to the movies, it's because there's other people there. Uh-huh. So I think this is, this is to me from an ergonomic and a psychological point of view, this is the wrong direction. Yeah. Now we've all said, you know, someday they're going to make these as spectacles that'll just, you know, sit lightly on your nose and you'll have augmented reality. Show me those then I'll give it an A plus on ergonomics, but I don't even think the technology to make that exists. So Apple is doing a lot of hand waving here for something that I don't, I think is dead on arrival personally dead on arrival. Oh, wow. They'll sell a million next year. Yeah, that's fine. Still dead on arrival. Okay. And by the way, I don't think they're making a lot of money. People were (laughs) creeped out about 3,500 bucks. That's probably pretty close to the bill of materials. I mean, it's probably, it's, it's, you can't, the the problem that that everybody else has now, if, if they think, if they disagree with you and decide that, that, that they want goggles, they want to make them. The problem is Apple has locked up so many patents along with 5,000 built something built along with building something that is so self-contained it will be hard at any price for anyone to put out any piece of device that's going to really compete as heavily with that right now. Um, the biggest problem that HTC and, and Facebook had is, and Google had was a constant discussion about price, which Apple stopped talking about. And Apple was just like, I mean, that isn't the, the highest end headset that I've seen, but it's the highest publicly available one or will be. And the ones that I saw that were, that were nicer than this were a quarter million dollars each. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, they, so, so I'm going to um, point out so that, the, so the, the Microsoft Connect, which was the fastest selling consumer product of all time at that time, you probably don't even remember it. <laughs> yes, I remember sold 35 <laughs> million units and is gone and was considered a massive failure. A lot of technology went into that thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I, that sold 35 million and was considered a failure. I, I just well, I don't think this think, is going to sell it'll... a million big deal. Well, I think it'll be, I think the first couple of years, it'll probably be, you know, somewhere in the sub 5 million range. A uh, million is going to be the basement. I think it'll, I don't, I think that 5 million is probably. Well, I could sell ceiling. 35 million and still be a failure. Of course, it's a lot more expensive than the Connect well, was. It's a lot more yeah. expensive than Connect was. And so, so, the so thing that's is, why it's, still, it's not going to sell 35 million, I might well, add. And, and I don't remember what the numbers are for the watch, but they weren't b- very big in the first This is year. not the watch. You know, like, this is I, not I, the I, watch. The watch was yeah. relatively much, you know, a tenth the cost. And uh, was an accessory that you could wear that had some utility right out of the box. It was a watch. Yeah. Is the bigger question I, here I, not I, does Apple need this to be the, the the first big success in this idea of spatial computing? Can we not have a second generation that is the Vision without the oh, Pro that think, then becomes the consumer model? You're, I think you're still probably three or four years away from a consumer a, a model that's less expensive than this one. So this is the stopgap, um, right? But, but it's not Absolutely. a stopgap. I don't think it was a stopgap. I think it is another step in the in something they were building from the beginning. So the thing is, is that there's no. Is I that think that they. Gap? No, it's not a stopgap. It's a step because it's not. They're not saying, "Oh, we couldn't get to what we wanted to." I think that they were. They've been building a, a systematic process. This is part of that systematic process. I don't think they got impatient a couple of years ago. I think that they probably had this largely figured out five, four or five years ago. Um, you know, in that as a headset of this is what the first one's going to be. And then the next one will be much more transparent and the next one will be much more. I mean, Apple is oftentimes working at 10 years in advance 
you know, and yeah. so the thing is, is that I don't think that this is, if they got impatient, it was in 2017 or 2018 or 2016. It wasn't last year or two years ago. And so the thing is, is that they, um, so they, I think that they, the problem is, is that you can't build the set the headset that you want without people interacting with the headset that you can make today. So while you can, while you can yeah, um, understand that. talk about that and, and what happened is all the other headsets have been dumbed down because of price. Like even the, even the, even the, the, the Facebook one, that was $1,500, which gave more headroom price has been devastating to these devices because they, they just require so much technology to be fluid. And so Apple's making it more expensive. They're allowing themselves. Yeah, to as figure I said, that out the technology is in there that probably cost them, you know, close to that to put seven, 11 cameras and seven. Oh, it's screens. incredible. And it's, it's an incredible I understand device. that. I'm not, you know, they had to cost that much. In fact, Harry McCracken pointed out that the Apple one, which cost $666 in its day, in uh, in 1976 dollars would have cost three thousand five hundred fifty four dollars today. So it's fifty four dollars cheaper in real dollars than than the <laughs> and, and I got than the uh, Apple my One. Apple yeah. My Apple IIe in today's prices was over five thousand. I just just say that those uh, things were much more useful immediately. Oh, this is know. this is not you know no one wants. I hate to tell you, Alex. I know you love it, and there are people who love it. No one wants to put screens on their face. It's a horrible experience. Well, not 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 yet. I just I I I do just I do think that this is the best that they could do right now. They had to have the first one of these. So great. Eventually, they colonized a craggy uh, island covered in burnt guano. Congratulations, but, but, you own it. But this and this this would be this would be a very very weird choice for for Meta to have done for Apple. If they have the they, they have, have the ability the to simply say yeah. exactly if I think that they have the ability to launch a product like this without any real expectations that's going to be a success in any way other than it works. Uh, this what they have to what I think that what their priority is that they have to sell the idea that this is going to be so uh, the 4K display that you're going to have off of your Mac is so good that it's going to be the equivalent of a real display for you when you have uh, app windows floating in front of you in front of an environment that's going to be so easy to use as a display that you're going to be able to use it uh, they have to they just have and they have to prove the idea that this is not just for uh, training people in uh, how to how to uh, how to maintain an aircraft engine in the military this is not just about gaming that this is going to be a computing platform so i think that their idea is that so long as they develop a first generation of hardware that can sell that that idea that this is a platform for apps not just a way to look at magic dinosaurs jumping up and down on the desk in front of you they will consider that a win for the next for the next generation to come and i think that one of the big things is that while uh, everybody else had to figure out how to build all those things. Apple is making a lot of the apps that already exist just simply work in there. And so yeah. being able to, you're not leaving this to use something else, which is a big uh, hill that everybody else had to, cl to climb is like, what do we do and how do we get people to put it on? Well, there's just a ton of things that you can just go ahead and do in there. And so, and you know, I think a lot of yeah, us have, that's by the way, you, you say it that way. I'd say it's a, uh, Oh, nice lock in Apple. This does not work. <laughs> if you are not, do you have to own an iPhone to use it? I know it's a standalone computer, but, um, oh, probably. I mean, it's not, it's not really going to be aimed at nobody. Like Apple's no yeah. Well, I'll buy it. Do I need a Mac? Fine. I get an iPad too. Let's just buy everything. It's very good. But, uh, it's a very good ecosystem play for Apple. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. And, it, and, and the it, reason it they could do smart. that, Alex, is because it's basically, you know, iPad OS. I'm sure it's running a mock current. It's very yeah. similar, I think, to iPad OS, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, they're they're good at the uh, at the platform State of the Union the, yesterday. They were running through like what it how uh, what it will what will will it be like to take an iPad app and modify it so that uh, it will work on Vision OS again. Assuming that you just you don't want to just have it just be an iPad uh, window that's uh, that's floating in front of you. And really, it's you drag something new into your Xcode and then you simply decide here is your here is your Swift view of your of your current app. Do you want to hang hang things off the bottom of it? Do you want to have uh, uh, certain things and what do you want to add three dimensional elements to it and if, if that's really all you want to do with it you can basically promote it to being a vision os app very very quickly and of course they want people to be more ambitious than that and i will also say as an aside that if all it does is hey look i can have virtual screens all around me that's not terribly ambitious and i hope that they crack the idea of 3d computing and 3d spatial computing as something more than I can instead of having to instead of having to next day a three hundred and twenty dollar new monitor to have a fourth or fifth or fifth screen on my desktop, I can just drag a window up there. It has to be better than that. 
Uh, and I don't think they really made that case yesterday. But again, th- it's about the ecosystem, about being able to take your, the app that you created, make amendments to it and turn it into an actual Vision OS app that has shadows that reacts to the light that's around you, that when people enter the room, that your app will fade into the background so that, that person can get the focus. All these things you get for free. That's a very, very powerful mojo for a developer. So I um, I think really that it is important to understand that there's 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 this is this is next year which by the way must have surprised a few people this is not this is not this year this is next year and that could early next year could be june it could be a year out (laughs) so uh well let's say uh may 31st (laughs) but so but uh the audience for this is obviously it's not us it's not maybe us but it's not consumers it's developers um that's obvious now did they give any indication when developers might get the first developers? I think, I think that's were when given the opportunity I'd... to try it on uh, last night. No, no, I mean to actually into, develop. No, that was for it. that was where I was yeah, going next. Well, they said, "Oh, sorry." sorry. Um, and <laughs> at the event, Apple announced that they would be releasing Vision Kit um, within what was it the first month? Within next month? A, a, a couple of months from now. Yeah. Thank you. Said. And there's and there's a virtual reality. There's, there's basically a, a virtual environment inside of Xcode, so that if you're testing out this thing without having the hardware, you basically have like a 3D first person shooter uh, look at this fake room that they've they've developed inside of Xcode to test it out in. So mm-hmm. yeah, you can get going in about two months. Looks like. So that's really who. I mean, that's really the real question. Uh, that and the only question that matters is: Will people develop for it? Right. I know you will, Alex. And that's well, I think, this, I think I, that there's go, a lot ahead, of people Alex. are going to develop. I think I, you, but what is the for. calculation a developer has to make? They have to say, well, well I mean, A, do I have the skills? Do I have a product that would f- fit I, this category? It, and finally, is there going to be an, a, a, a market for this a year or yes. more out? As a small developer, that that's a that's a hard conversation to have, is because it's a lot of investment with not a lot not a large market. As a large developer, I mean, I've been doing immersive media for 30 years now, like, you know, so, so it's, you know, so we've been building these things for a long time. And one of the things that's required to make this work is to do a lot of it. So you, you can't, you can't, you just can't think about how to make it work or how it should interact until you've done it. And so for a lot of the larger developers and gaming developers and, and infrastructural developers that want to get into this, they're going to build a small division that just, you know, if, if it doesn't work out, they'll they'll reorganize those three or four people. But there's going to be three, four, five, ten people in a lot of Fortune 100 companies that are figuring out what the next thing is, you know, and and trying to make sure that they're not caught behind because there's it's it's not something you can. It is very complicated and not something you can come up to speed really quickly with. Yeah. Well, again, if you're not, if you're not very ambitious, you can make it a. This, this is this is what bothers me. You could do a Disney who, Plus who promise, that, which, right? Yeah, Bob like, Iger hey, said, hey, "We'll put Disney Plus on it." Sure. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> hey, great, you can watch 3D movies and it looks awesome. Hey, great, again, you can have virtual monitors for your iPad well, and, apps. But if it's, it, it really has to be more than that, I think, at, to be considered a cultural success. At four K per eye, just to be clear, at four K per eye at the at the frame rates that it's going to run at, which looks to be approximately eighty three frames a second. The um, uh, how did you get that number? That's good to know, because they did polling, not say they that the R one chip. Yeah, the, uh, they said the R one chip pulls at every at twelve milliseconds. That's oh, perfect. Frames a they did say the latency was twelve milliseconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's eight, about eighty three frames a second. And so, so the um, so uh, if you what that means is that it's not just that you can watch Avatar on your headset. It's that it will look at least as good as it did in the theater. Like that's let me the, ask about you know, that because I was the, curious. That's the distinction because Avatar is not stereoscopic, or it is. is it? Yeah, Avatar, Avatar, and Avatar Two are both stereoscopic. They're yeah, designed it's, it's, to be they're two they're eyes. Designed. Oh, I guess you wear goggles with them, mm-hmm. and so when they showed it at yeah. IMAX, they use IMAX. Uh, you, re- you, you goggles. use the okay. Yeah, you use the goggles. Okay. On. And, and so, so are many movies amazing. stereoscopic? Is that Oh, there will be. I mean, the, the the problem is, is that I mean, there's a lot of them that are done. Not very many of them are done well. So the Hobbit, um, the Avatar, well, yes, yeah, so I think Kev was saying ones. yesterday um, that for the Chinese market, because the Chinese are still very excited about 3D movies, yes, most movies now are at least up converted to 3D. And the problem is the up conversion just the, the up conversion won't be that great. But the um, the and there's lots and lots of movies that are up converted because that was a thing for a while after avatar came out everybody right. built you know for all of us i literally sent out an email this morning to a friend of mine who's got a couple 3d cameras and like hey you might want to rebuild those <laughs> so you might want to build those and get them put back together he's got them sitting in pieces and um but the uh 
the issue is is that there's a there's a bunch of things that'll be interesting in in the in that development area. Like for instance, it'd be really convenient to be able to show sports live, and but it's really hard to get the rights to that. If only they had uh, a soccer or football or or something that they could shoot in stereo that they could put into that. Oh wait, wait. <laughs> so so the MLS becomes a lot more makes a lot more sense now. How hard um, and, is it now? That, so Micah found the thing that said the SDK is available later this month. How hard is it to develop this though without the hardware? I mean, this you, know, is, you can do a I, lot of I, it. I want to say this is where I feel there might be in in these early days. Apple very much positioned uh, both on stage and in you know the the first introduction to developers, the idea that even more whenever we saw uh, apps from iPhone and iPad make their way to the Mac, even more so. I don't think they're that developers necessarily. I think the first question they ask, uh, you talked about the questions they should ask themselves. The first question they ask is, do I need to do any development for Vision OS? Because so many developers can take the apps they already have and just have them as part of a spaces workspace yeah. where and, it is just right. that Slack and, that they don't need to make to use your, of the volumes and spaces. Go ahead. And to your point, there's a lot of stuff that'll be available to the user immediately without any any special development. But there is a lot of opportunity to to build out a um, you know something that is really taking advantage of the platform. And and that's and those are the things that end up at the top of the store. You know, I mean, like that's the, you know, like yeah, if you, absolutely. You, you can you can port your thing over, but what's going to end up in the VR in the in the or the um, the Vision Store and at the front page? And and we should I mean, even when it's small, it's a lot of people willing to spend money on it because they have they the, this is the only place they can go buy that stuff. Um, when you do something, you know, like Elements was not a, the most the greatest app in the world ever made to talk about the the elements. But when it came out for the iPad, everybody I knew bought it because we were just like, it's $15 and we all paid for it. And we all wanted to see what they were doing in 3D and everything else. That's going to be another opportunity for them to go back and grab that, that data. Um, again, sports, you're probably going to see a bunch of stuff. Apple's probably going to dump a lot of money into the market. Um, I, I was the beneficiary of Google and Facebook doing that. <laughs> so, so, so the, so the, um, so there's going to be a lot of, uh, of people that are pushing, they're going to spend a lot of money into that market to, um, to energize it and to prove and show models. And so, so I think that there's a lot, there's a lot that's, I, going to be I, there I do that, not doubt that Apple will pour billions of dollars, literally, literal billions. For the next five years. For, for people who are marketing and, and creating, creating content. content and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. No, the, and that's, you know, if you're going to say there is something in the, in the vision pros favor, it's that Apple is clearly all in on this thing. I mean, they must've spent 10 billion well, I mean, a if, year, if, a year, right? That's what Meta spent. <laughs> Probably, that's what that's Meta, what Meta spent. spent. Like so they must have spent ten billion dollars for the last decade. Mm. That's a yes. lot of money uh, on this thing, and I expect they will continue spending significant amounts of money into the future. Yeah, and, and, and I think that their reputation is a reputational uh, risk because they're, you know, if if it's not a success, people are going to look at Tim Cook. Um, so they need they need it to succeed. I just. I think that there's this fundamental thing that that everybody seems to ignore. People do not want to strap devices. I think you're right. I mean, I think, just, I think 70% of the population probably doesn't want to strap anything on their face. I think it's probably 70%, 70, 75%, but 30% of the population is still a lot of people, you know, like, yeah. like, you know, and so that's, so this I mean, will be something easy. for the 30%. This is, yeah. And and that 100%. will be enough of a market. It certainly will be a financially enough of a market for Apple. Apple doesn't have more than thirty percent of the smartphone market globally, but they have m much more than the lion's share of, of profit. I mean, so yeah, but they the, can when, make the, money on it. I I'm not saying when, they can't. I just I don't think this is going to change the world. And the only reason I'm being so negative is because, and I knew this would happen. You're going to see every pundit in the world uh, s swooning over this thing, especially people who've tried it on. And uh, yeah, there is something to swoon about. This is, and we're going to take a break and then come back and talk about the technology because it's really, this is Apple operating on all eight cylinders. I mean, they've created something technologically amazing. I just, uh, I think it's worth pointing out <laughs> that this is a yet to be demonstrated market. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, the thing that really, really sticks to my craw is that, uh, 
the iPhone is a small percentage of the mobile market, but the market for people who actually own smartphones is phenomenal. It's it's it's, it's getting close to a hundred. And they created if you had, that if you had, market. If you had, really. if you had feature phones, yeah. yeah. No, no, that 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 was a long, long process. I, I wouldn't agree with that. But okay. what, I'm, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that it, the development of the, of the phone was such that they're so commoditized and they're so useful and so relevant to daily life that if you are at the lowest income level, the United States government will buy you a phone and set you up with a data plan. That's right. Just to make sure that just to make sure that you have an email address. Just make yeah. sure you can get access to government services, that sort of thing. If this platform, I'm not just limiting this to to uh, to uh, to Apple. If this platform is for people who could shell out a thousand bucks for this kind of a headset, and that's that's not the that's not the aspirational level of technology for the people who for the people who have the money to spend on something that may or may not be actually useful. And you and Leo, you you had one of the one of the more, most important points that. Uh, everyone is who got the demo today and yesterday has been swooning about Avatar 2 watching through this headset. But watching, would you rather watch uh, watch Avatar 2 in 3D through this $3,500 head, headset alone? Or would you rather watch it on the sofa with your spouse and your two children on a $400 TV, 4K TV set? They're watching it as a group together without having to buy everybody a thousand dollar headset is absolutely the, the more, the, the more, the more enjoyable way to watch a movie. I think, I think that's going to be true for a long, long time. That the 30% who buy and wear this thing are going to kind of be outcasts. It's good. And they're not going to don't invite them to the we'll birthday be, we'll party. We'll be nice to them. We'll be nice to we'll them. We'll call them the spooky eyed set. <laughs> All right, they, but they have, they they have the money to do they have the money to retribute against us like no let's be nice to them so they don't yeah. have us killed or something have 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 their Tesla robots just like whack us in the knee or something yeah I mean that's the fundamental thing this is a single emphatically single user device that gives you some benefit over what we have today but not massively so. Um, mm -hmm. They'll develop, but yeah, not yet. Yeah, it's. I, I think they'll be. I don't. I think it's much smaller percentage of that that thirty percent, but a small percentage of people will probably spend most of the day in it. Like they'll they'll probably get. And those into people it. will have a psychological damage. <laughs> that, be, that it is, cannot be uh, cannot be downplayed. It's funny I mean, because Microsoft. That, I mean, Apple at the same time as they introduced this, introduced a new feature in WatchOS that tells you to go outside and get some sun. So. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing to be. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Thing all phones day. are good for us. You so know, first thing, I mean, right. And they haven't, the, you know, it's, and this is even more been, isolating. I mean, phones right? and, and for both our physical eyes, as well as our, you know, there's definitely problematic problems with the process. I'm not saying that there isn't, but I'm still saying it's going to be a big deal. Like it's going to be a, a platform. Well, it's a big and, deal and again, now. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to, I, I think that over the years, as they become much, there's going to be a high performance version that keeps on staying at $3,500 and keeps on getting better, might even go up to more money and be even better than what we see here. There's going to be a less expensive version that's going to, you know, they're, they're going to have less and less expensive versions like they've done with every other product that they've made is they've made one that, that they could do at the price that they sell it, sold it at, then they go upwards and downwards, you know, from, from that. So we're, we can probably expect five years from now to have one that's $800 and one that's $8,000. You know, like that's, that's probably the direction Apple will take it. And I should point out the, the, the vast success of smartphones are sub $50. By, by, by total sales. By sales. Uh, but Apple, Apple has a much larger percentage of the profit. Oh, I understand. <laughs> like profit so, so, wise. So that's if the, what you're looking at is profit, maybe. And you're, Although if you're and spending and 10 billion a year most for 20 years, most companies you're think have to about make a lot of money profit. to make up for that. Well, a million a year is still 3 billion. Dollars a year. That's not That means Apple. you've only lost seven billion that year. <laughs> well, I mean, it's again, it's <laughs> not that Apple can't afford to. Right. I mean, only Apple could do this, and I think that's the thing that's a, of interest. People are getting mad at me now in the chat room, it's, saying, "Why are you so not, negative?" I, I'll just not, stop. But you'll you'll see that, you young people in a yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, it's, you'll it's, be, hey, here's yeah, the good Apple, news: in two years, you'll be able to buy this for thirty five dollars. Just at the goodwill. Yeah, the, so, you know the uh, the advantage that Apple has is that number one is that what it took to do this was an incredible investment that yes. almost no other company nobody could, could do this. Yes. Number two is that they have the skill set to do hardware at this level that almost nobody else has. 
Number three, I'm not nobody, but almost nobody, especially at that at that tolerance level. Number three is that they have an entire ecosystem that they're setting up that they've already set up for the last five or six years that's tied into the hardware, to many, many pieces of hardware, your AirPods, everything else is all tied into this experience. And nobody else has that entire thing. And what Apple has been slowly doing over the last couple of years is play, starting to play games. And this is this is a... This, this is the, the biggest, and I, I've said this, I don't know, for the last five years, that Apple's number one problem is antitrust because they've taken what they're, the, the size and ability that they have and, it, and they are, they are um, they're basically playing games that no one else can play. That's a good and point. And they're going to go, we're going to, yeah. we're going to play a game like the M1 chip. And it's an argument for letting Apple those, get big, right? Or letting a company well, get big because only they could do these kinds of moonshots. They're, I mean, the, there is no other company, but the problem for the rest of the industry is like you can't, there's no real answer to the M1 chips because you can't really get everybody to agree. You know, like Apple owns everything that's required to make that work. And do, being a, a vertical system is almost impossible to do and you should never try to do it by yourself if you're a little company <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because that's that's almost that's almost suicide other- but once you get over to the other side you have no comp you have like they're they have no competition in their in r- r- true competition in where they're going and well, so the there is, is a that- big question mark they, because can you make this at a consumer price and if you do matter. what do you take out I mean, what we're seeing is the Cadillac. This is the thing with everything. What do you, what it's features not the Cadillac. do you, I would say that this is a nice Honda. Like the really? compared to where they're going to go with it. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, you, this okay. A, you mean eventually. A, right now. But, wait, no, there's, now. They need technologies. No, right now. If they're going to turn it into like lightweight spectacles, driving, they need technologies been, that don't exist right now. Every, everyone's driving around little Yugos right now. And Apple, and Apple brought in a Honda. They've got, you know, there's the Ferrari is still out there and getting down to the Yugo will be hard for their Honda to for them to figure out. It's going to be much harder for them to go downstream than upstream, you know, as far as what the feature sets and the quality. By the way, you can't get a used Honda for thirty five hundred bucks. I just want to point out (laughs) if you really want a Honda. So so anyway, it sounds very, very good. Nineteen, you can get a you can get a two thousand Honda Prelude, you know, with little flippy headset, you know, you know, so so, but but I but I think that so I think that that. The, the the real difficulty everybody else has is that once you put these on, it's you know I, the the other headsets are going to look like you goes you right, know, and you're going to well. Have, I think they've already done that. I mean, oh, that, well, they think they've probably oh, already man. done that. The Oculus, uh, the Pro is which was fifteen hundred bucks is now down to a thousand. Uh, is nothing compared to this? I mean, as right. far as and, I can and that's tell. the problem is yeah. And so people, the problem is, is that people will will you know they're they're going to have a hard time if they try the headset on. The, the issue is, is that they're going to have a hard time going back to the other headsets. Like that's going to be the the thing yeah. that, that is going to be difficult is that they're going to have a hard time. Well, doing start budgeting and everybody because you're going to have to save up some pennies yeah. because I've got a giant but what piggy I, bank. But what I say is that people will decide they can't afford that headset, but they're not going to say, I can't afford that headset. So I'm going to buy the Facebook headset. They're going to, or the meta headset. They're going to say, I can't afford that. And I'm just not going to use headsets like that. It's it's going to be it's that much different than the other ones that are there. That's the problem. No, unless uh, unless the one the Meta or another competitor basically uh, treats the like we like we were talking about last week. They could th- this could be the Newton message pad Apple uh, Apple does again, where they create this beautiful kind of aspirational, really expensive thing, and then then uh, another company says, "Hey, that's great, but what if it could fit in a shirt pocket? What if it cost half as much? And what if anybody could write software for it without having to pay a fortune for a development kit and then that's the platform that takes off for us newton is credible and wonderful and a highlight kind of, of technology kind of funny that we are complaining that you had to sign up for a facebook account to use the oculus <laughs> when you're almost certainly <laughs> going to have to have account. an apple account and register your yeah. irises and give them your firstborn so uh well, we have a different we have a different privacy relationship with facebook we do apple, that's, that's a good that's point yeah. yeah i didn't in fact i really didn't want to create uh, a meta account uh but I obviously have many connections to Apple. Anyway, I'm going to stop harshing people's <laughs> mellow. I know you all want to live in the future. And, uh, you know, here I am sitting here in the mud saying we're never getting to the stars. But uh, we will talk about what is quite impressive in terms of technology. And, by the way, the Mac Pro was announced. <laughs> in case oh, you forgot. Incidentally. And the 15-inch MacBook Air, which is probably the only thing everybody's going to buy. I bought one. Uh, we'll talk about that. And by the way, a thousand bucks less than a uh, Vision Pro, and also available to order now. And available now. So there you go. And useful. <laughs> and useful. And Arguably useful. useful. Yes. Um, our show today brought to you by. Thank you, Andy, for everybody for putting up with my uh, 
my cranky crankiness. I'll, I'll calm down now. Our show today brought to you by ACI Learning. Oh, man. I want to thank them. They sponsored our coverage yesterday of the Apple event, of the Microsoft events, uh, the week before, the uh, Build Keynotes. Uh, they uh, sponsor the studios. They've really been very good to us. Thank you, ACI Learning. And one of the reasons is because of our long relationship with IT Pro. Wait a minute, you say. Don't they compete with IT Pro? No, they are IT Pro. They, they've merged. IT Pro has been our trusted sponsor for the last decade. And they, as you probably know, most of us have experienced it, provide engaging, entertaining IT training to every one of our uh, listeners. As part of the ACI learning family, IT Pro's capabilities will continue to impressively grow. Now, even more so. Highly entertaining, bingeable, Short form content, about 20 to 30 minutes, full transcriptions. You can watch them make it. The, the studios are open Monday through Friday, nine to five. And you can go in the, just like you watch us live, you can go watch them live, be in the chat room with them live. They have 7,000 hours of on demand content. And the reason those studios are running all day, every day is because everything changes. The, the tests change, the certs change, software changes. There's new software, so they keep up. And that's the nice thing. You're getting the freshest content possible. 30% of ACI learners are MSPs now. I thought that was really interesting. I found that out the other day. That uh, managed service providers, that's what, that's what we use. We don't have a full-time IT staff. We have Russell and his team. He's an MSP. And ACI learning is great for MSPs. The MSPs love the practice labs that ACI learning offers. They test and experiment before deploying new apps or updates without compromising their production systems. Which is really nice because all you need is an HTML5 browser. You can do it on a Chromebook or iOS device if you want. to, And then run instances of Windows Server and desktop clients. And I always say, and I, I, I say it because I mean it, because I did it. <laughs> if you'd make a mistake, you just close the tab and, and you're back, back to square. It's okay. You didn't harm anybody. They also have... I love this practice exam so you can prepare for your certification examinations by taking the test before you take the test. That is the best way, I think, to get people used to the test format, how it's going to be. You can get the knowledge, but having the experience of taking the test ahead of time really makes a difference. One happy MSP team leader said, and I quote, I had 110 engineers in the field. We had dozens of IT pro accounts. Last year alone, they passed over 40 certs. Whatever your business, whatever your IT team, you know you need to keep them up to date. It's a benefit that keeps them employed. And by the way, keeping them employed is a high priority these days. Uh, plus, they they love learning more and they will benefit you because your your company, your business, your MSP will be more secure, more more effective. ACI learning. You know, I know how I know uh, that people love ACI training. The average view uh, dropout rate on uh, on most uh, you know training videos is about seventy percent. Only thirty percent make it through to the end of the video. With ACI learning, eighty percent make it through to the end of the video because the videos are compelling, they're entertaining, and even more importantly, they're valuable. You're getting what you need from them, so don't settle for subpar training. You can use ACI's Learn Pro Portal to assign courses, upskill your MSPs, manage seats, assign and unassigned team members. You'll get great graphical, uh, you know, views of how it's going. Retain top talent, upskill your team with IT Pro training from ACI Learning. ACI Learning's courses are easy to navigate, so much more straightforward than traditional training programs, and they fit your style and your needs and by the way iso certified you're getting the world-class training your team deserves ask that of the other guys right now as an individual you get 30 percent off if you use the offer code twit30 that's for a standard or premium individual it pro membership don't worry great discounts for uh for group learning for teams from two to a thousand the volume discounts down at five seats across audit it and cybersecurity readiness aci learning has premium training options waiting for you go.acilearning.com slash twit go.acilearning.com slash twit for more information and a free two-week training trial for your team that's enough to complete uh, everything you need for a cert actually if you work hard at it go.acilearning.com slash twit thank you aci learning 
We appreciate your support. Um, uh, I've really been impressed reading through, uh, you know, of course we saw a you know half hour video, but reading through later, the articles, uh, Lance's article in the tech radar, Marquez Brownlee's video about the technology really, uh, that that's what most oppresses me. It, this is, it strikes me as a plus technology, uh, 4k screens. They said postage stamp sized. Is that, that seems smaller. Large postage stamps, I think. Okay. A big postage stamp. Plus if you need a uh, correction, if you wear glasses, Zeiss lenses that are magnetically fitted in. Mm -hmm. I think that's cool. I'm, I'm sure that those will be really discounted and, and, and not very expensive to add to your. Yeah. Well, parents. you already spent $3,500. What's another 500 bucks? <laughs> 500 bucks is yeah. what I'm, that's Round my even four. Yeah. You can wear your contacts if you want, but I think you'd want yep. to wear those lenses. It's a fovea. This is really cool. I was hoping they would do this. The rumors were they would do this. this is a foveated display. Alex, you better explain what that is. Yeah, fo a foveated renderer, um, basically what it does is it's it's looking at, it, there's a, there's basically static or dynamic. So static a static foveated renderer is going to be a renderer that assumes that you're not going to look to the sides. And so it's going to render, it's going to focus all of the resolution, uh, possibly frame rate, all into the center of this or the center of where it thinks you're looking at. What Apple appears to have is a dynamic foveated renderer. And that dynamic foveated renderer follows your eyes. Mm -hmm. So it's literally watching your eyes um, moving around the screen and, and where the center of your focus is, which is actually a pretty small area of, of focus. Um, it is making sure that you get all the resolution that you can possibly, that you need or that it can provide there. And then as you move away into your periphery, it starts to lower that resolution and potentially even frame rate um, away. So mostly resolution, most likely in that in that area. And so by doing that, um, it allows it to take limited resources. Obviously, we had unlimited resources. We would we would not use a foveated render. We would just make everything really sharp by fovea having a foveated render. What we're able to do is is have just the resolution that you need at any given moment. And it appears that Apple has done this very well. I mean, if you don't do it well, you see it as, as you move your eyes quickly. Yeah, yeah, it would be weird. Start looking. to see edges and yeah, so on and so yeah. forth. But but in this case, it sounds like they've done a pretty good job of it. And that means that that's part of what allows them to have such a high resolution um, for those is that the resolution of the screens is that high, but how many bits it's actually sending to those screens at any given time is much lower, which which takes a lot of weight off of the processors. Uh, these are micro. By the way, I think foveated rendering might help with the comfort as well. I suspect, and maybe even with maybe. the nausea, because it's going to give you the sense of peripheral but, vision, right? Much I mean, more the, the natural. Real thing that, the thing with nausea is primarily frame rate. So that is the thing that a and lot these of are high frame a lot of rate, twelve milliseconds. So that's yeah. Yeah, so 12 yeah. milliseconds are about 83 frames a second, but that's where most people have an issue is in, um, there's there's two things that can cause nausea. One is that your inner ear and your, basically basically most nausea is related to your inner ears feeling something that your eyes aren't seeing. That's, that's what happens with seasickness, yeah. yeah. Is that your, eye, your, your eyes aren't seeing, because for a million years before we did all this other stuff, if your eyes were seeing something different than your inner ear, you had been poisoned by something you just ate and you need to get it all out, out of the system as fast as possible. And so we had a natural, people who survived had a natural reaction to throw up, you know, when they did that. And so, uh, so what happens with low frame rate is, uh, is that you, um, uh, so the thing that happens with low frame rate is that, is that your eyes are behind, which is another sense. And so, so what we found, I mean, your head turns found, but, and then the picture yeah. turns and, and your, and, 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 and your it can body be very says subtle. there's something wrong here. Ooh. And it's, it's very subtle. It's, you know, the, um, Disney did a bunch of research on this in the, in the nineties and, you know, with big onyx boxes and everything else. And they would turn the frame rate up and down to see for rides. When do you, when do you blow chunks? And, and, um, and the, uh, and it was, uh, tw you know, between 12 and, and 18, depending on the person, about 12 to 18 frames a second. At 12 frames a second, no one could hold it. <laughs> there's, like, also, so, so it there's also the so, issue of um, the difference between the focal length that your eyes are seeing by, by so, triangulation versus your actual focus distance. And those are not going to match because the screens are close, but the objects look, but the, the but the apparent, the apparent, um, w what it appears for you is important in that, in that area. Um, you know, because the, the reality is when you're looking through glasses, you're looking through something like that. It's, you're looking at something that's right in front of you. That is, that is sharpening what's in, what's out there. So it's where we're focused to, uh, in that area. But the, 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 the issue is, is that the frame rate, as well as the other thing that ma matters a lot 
and this is gonna be where, where they're gonna have trouble with 3D movies, is that um, the if you change the orientation of the camera, you know, a lot uh, or or even a fair bit in 3D, you'll get sick because we used to do this. We had this thing in a, one of the 360 shots that we did. It was stereo. At the end, my brother was Steadicam. He'd get to the end of the walk and they turn the Steadicam sideways. And it always told us when that person got to that part of the of the Oculus uh, test because they would take the headset off immediately. <laughs> they would start, they'd pull it up. They're like, "Oh, you're done." You know. Anyway, so um, so the uh, you can't change it. And what that where that becomes a problem is you have to the making content for this is why it's important to do a lot of content. Making content for these headsets is completely different than making content for TV because you actually have to slow down the edits. You you can't for some people, especially at higher frame rates, you can't. Um, you can't have big moves, big helicopter moves, jib moves, shaky camera, all those things are going to affect people's experience of, of the, of the piece. And so you have to, you have to build the content. Eventually people are going to not be building content that they're trying to take to the theater and to the headsets. Oh, interesting. What you're going to start seeing is you're going to start seeing high frame, high frame rate, you know, at least 60 frames a second, um, possibly 120 eventually, but high frame rate, um, content has less cameras, possibly only one camera. Um, experiencing those things and 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 kind of slowing everything down because that's what people are going to like and that's also why you know the the cameras on the on the headset are going to be really good as soon as people realize they can't treat the headset like they treat their cell phone which is like to go up and down like this and and be dancing when people put those headsets on to shoot their kids or you know whatever they want to shoot film in 3D they're going to have to think like a camera person and not move their head very much. <laughs> do it very, Rich very DeMuro, gently. who was my Make replacement on uh, the radio show, and by the way, proves that Apple hates me because he <laughs> not only was invited to the event, but got to try on the headset. He said he tried to get sick and he couldn't. I don't know how hard he tried. Yeah, I don't know how hard he was able. He was... Yeah. Uh, Ate this some lukewarm pork and everything <laughs> you know, before, before getting in you there. Know, passing, passing the other, passing the outside world into the headset has a huge impact mm -hmm. on how you feel, whether you feel sick or not. But remember, you're not always you doing that. that you may not want to do that. That's what that uh, crowd does. Is how much it it dials in? How much of the outside world? You're right. If I'm a, a person gets nause nauseated, I might want to dial in more of the natural world. These are m now. I want to know if anybody knows. If it sounded like he said micro OLED, micro screens. OLED, he did micro, OLED. not yep. micro yep. LED, but micro OLED. Yes, there's a big difference. These are he OLED also, he screens. Also, he also said micro OLED with Apple Silicon backplane. So huh. he said that, that was that, that was within the within the presentation. That's so I was, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out means. exactly what he means yeah. by that. Exactly. Yeah. Seven point five micron pixels, twenty three million on two panels. Uh, if I do my math correctly, that's 11 and a half million per panel. That means 4K, roughly 4K. Um, three element lenses as well, which is, they said that's a big deal. I don't, I don't know why that's a big deal. But anybody, stop me if, stop I me. I'm just going to keep going through the specs and you stop me if you have something to add. Uh, M2 in this. Of course, yes. it'll be an M3 next year, an M4, and on and on. Actually, it's interesting because if it comes out next year, it probably should be an M3. They might end up shipping it with an M3, I would imagine. Uh, and, a, and a new chip that Apple's designed called the R1, which sounds like a DSP. It's designed to support all the inputs, the cameras and so forth, uh, and keep that responsive. Yes. I mean, it's kind of amazing. I mean, the R1 is an amazing chip. <laughs> like it, and it, it gets back into, you have to know a lot about chip design to to build something that is built, really purpose-built for this headset, you know, and uh, not a lot of companies could, you know, put that together. So, and and I, and again, I think that that's, that's part of what makes this thing, this thing work. There are 12 cameras, five sensors, six, including LiDAR, by the way, in the, in the bridge of your nose, six microphones. Yeah. In order to do processes within 12 milliseconds, you need something special. That's the R1. Yeah, the R1. Do, do we know any more about the architecture of the R1? Do we know anything about it? It's just, it's a, it sounds like a DSP. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know. I don't think, I don't think they showed up. They've not revealed. So they to, the rest. Yeah. to quickly uh, go back, so in the process of creating... OLED, you uh, deposit it onto a substrate. The Apple Silicon uh, backplane is that substrate. So they made a custom designed substrate on which the That's OLED is That's what switching placed. the pixels on and mm -hmm. off and, and all of that. Okay. Um, 
micro LED has actually an LED per pixel. It's a different, entirely different technology. And eventually will be on probably your iPhone and uh, your, your Mac. Uh, and maybe it'll yeah. be inside the Vision. I don't know. The Vision Pro. Yeah. By the way, were we surprised that it's Vision OS after they trademarked all those other OSs? <laughs> after they threw us all those. <laughs> no, all those, they were uh, kind of red herrings in the galore there, yeah. weren't there? Uh, I think they're trying to. I think they're trying to catch more leakers. <laughs> Maybe that was it. That's yeah. how. That's how many they need to reserve. Yeah. Uh, Vision Vision Pro is the uh, name of the device, and note the pro. And everybody's been saying that this is a pro device. Uh, Vision yeah. OS is the operating system. Any more insight into what it really is? It does look a little bit like iPad OS. I'm sure it still has a mo like it has all the features of Mac yeah. OS, right? Uh, yeah, the, uh, it does yeah. support Unity. Alex, I know you prefer the re Unreal no, I don't, Engine. I don't have any. No, I, I think that, I mean, I, I think we've talked about this for a long time. I think that uh, Epic's lawsuit with Apple was an Epic failure. Yes. <laughs> you know, like it, it is. It should support they, the Unreal Engine, you know, but it won't. Well, yeah. Apple, you know, Apple had, uh, it's not just that App, Unreal could have done this. A Unreal was being brought up on stage every keynote for a couple of years as Apple built up towards this, they obviously knew where Apple was going with this. They, they were building into it and they decided that taking a high risk maneuver was more important than what they were getting, you know, added onto and, and, and opened up the lawsuit. And now, you know, and the thing is, is that most of us didn't, we had forgotten that unity really did anything right. by, the, by the time the lawsuit started, we had kind of forgotten the unity and, uh, and I'd done a lot of unity development um, and, uh, and then as soon as this happened, all of us were kind of like, well, we'll see what Apple does with unity. And the question really was, is, is Apple going to build its own development platform or whether it's going to use unities? And it looks like it's a bit of both. So Apple's building up their own capacity to do that, but they're, but they've taken a relatively good, you know, a solid path, which is they can't fix everything. And Joe so Rossignol, you know, who's a senior reporter at Mac rumors says, uh, that there is a WWDC session just came out that calls it XROS. And the slide is XROS. <laughs> so apparently XROS was an internal name, mm -hmm. uh, but it's Vision OS. I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, so but so I think that I think it's going to be interesting to see how the the process with Unity, though. I mean, I think that and it, it is helpful because there's no way they could build their own OS. Right. You know, from the ground up to do that. their own engine. Yeah. Yeah. The most advanced personal electronics device ever. Crow's Apple. And I think that's fair, actually. It probably is. It's incredibly advanced. I mean, yeah, for, for, uh, for they for built a spaceship for your uh, face. Be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and th where and you look a, stays good... private uh, because those aren't really your eyes. Does it? Mm. Now, here's the thing I want to know. Is it like one of those uncanny things like Jesus with it follows you wherever you go? Like the oh, eyes, the it's, eyes are it's always, it is. I think this is part of the reason why we you. didn't see anyone with it on their face yeah. because they have not. No yeah. Why did not? Okay. Conspiracy theory time. Why did we not see anybody so wearing I, it? I, I genuinely feel it's because any executive, any Apple, you know, it, well, yeah, no one was able was allowed to take any video with it. It would have fallen apart the if they put it on the demo because I don't think they've nailed the, <laughs> the outward eyes. view yet. Yeah. It looked good in the the oh. you know photos that we saw, but it's. Do you think Alex, those are fake, faked eyeballs? No. No, okay. I, I think there, there I think was an uncanny valley uh, element to it. I That's thought weird. it looks like when it's Burke weird. is wearing his um, motorcycle helmet with the, you know, the sort of yeah. visor down and you could see his eyes through it. That's what it reminded yeah. me of. Yeah, that, that would be the best they're case. There, there's been so many memes done of Mark Zuckerberg wearing headsets and stuff like that, that I think that Apple probably just said, we don't want to be those memes. Like, you know, and, and we don't want to be the ones that they put the, those pictures on. I think that's probably why they did it. Was I just, just that yeah. they, well, now they they're going to have creepy eye memes. People, uh, I think there's That's memes right. awaiting no matter what you do, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, but I think um, those like eyes are generated from the scan <laughs> that you do with the uh, LiDAR on your smartphone, on your iPhone yeah. initially. And that yeah. also creates your avatar in use in, for use in FaceTime. I have to say the FaceTime usage is use case is not compelling. It's not like, and they did this because they didn't want to do what Meta did with the spaces and the feet, are, the legs are missing and all that. They're, those people are not in the room with you. They're on a screen. So basically you're just seeing a FaceTime screen with... I thought that, I thought that, that demo was the least compelling thing that very, they did in the It's no better no. than regular FaceTime. It and worse, like, it's mm -hmm. worse because they're not seeing you. 
they're seeing your avatar. Yes. Model. Why? And this, mm. I think that this was the one place where I felt there was a mistake done in the keynote, which is they chose later on in the technology portion to talk about what you looked like in a FaceTime call. So I kid you not, when they first showed off FaceTime using it, everybody was so distracted talking to one another going, so what do I look like in it? What do I, yes. no one was paying That's attention. That's what we were saying. No one was paying attention. We were all asking questions. We were all processing we were in their head. How here. is it possible that we look? And then they finally addressed it. I think that that was a mistake because it took everybody out of the moment where up to that point, you heard these oohs and ahs. Suddenly there was this murmur of why are they not telling us what we look like in this view? Right. And I, I they should have they, focused I, I group the presentation because the other time that happened is when they said, and we're finally bringing to the iPad an app that we We've never brought to the iPad before. And I think everybody in our audience, I bet you everybody in this theater was saying, the calculator? Oh, I thought it was Xcode. <laughs> health. Yeah. It wasn't okay, the calculator, was health, but we'll get to that. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> there's only that's... eight hours in the day, but uh, if we can, <laughs> um, we'll get to that. But actually, just quickly going back to uh, iView, uh, you are right that you know the the trick where you have that 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 roadside picture of Jesus with the eyes follow you. Yeah, it's the same technology. It's a lenticular, it's lenticular. Uh, display, so that if you, people look you from one side, they'll see you'll see they'll see the side of your face. They look you from from straight ahead. Uh, but yeah, the, when I when so I when, when I'm wearing that, and our housekeeper comes in to vacuum, everywhere she goes in the room, it'll be look like I'll, I'm looking at her. Yeah. Right. I, 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 that's I, I, I like the yeah. That's that's, that's what, how it's supposed <laughs> to work. I like the idea of it. I I like that they they're thinking about well how do how do I interact with people in the room? How do people know that hey look I'm I'm actually got the knob turned all the way to I don't want to see anybody in the room so don't try to don't don't think that you're actually making eye contact with me versus how do I give myself a sense of feeling of presence? But just just like with those avatars, it seems like the risk of looking incredibly dorky with this because this technology kind of works it works admirably well but not well enough i think the risk is very 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 high i do i do think that the i did notice one thing that kind of got me interested in the avatars that they mentioned that uh they can also represent you basically if, if you're if if there are people who are, who are just using a regular mac or regular iphone uh, to facetime with you your avatar will be just basically will be you uh in in the in their their view of uh, of you in the in the facetime call it made me wonder if that couldn't be something that I could use uh, even if I didn't actually have the headset on. Like if I owned it and I've, I've or in some way, shape sure or form, I've created this avatar, but I, it's like, I don't want, I, I want to do Mac No, I think they said it don't could. Want, I don't want, I don't want to have to find a hoodie, a didn't, clean hoodie. Didn't they after say I've been that like, that's a feature? Uh, Sagan. Yeah. They're going to move that yeah, into I, FaceTime, I think. They said that was a feature in yeah. iPadOS. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that, that, I, that's definitely a feature, but I, I, what I'm wondering is that if it will work if, again, if I don't own one of these things. Can no, I that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because you're not, that's why you don't use your thing to scan it. You use your phone to scan it. So, well, yeah, I, think I bet that, you I think that what's interesting, that. if there was ever a zigzag, I think it's actually that face, that face there, because I think that I really felt like Memojis was building up to be you yeah, no kidding. when you're, when you want to be virtual. Yeah. And then they, it felt like, because I, the problem is, is that the uncanny valley level of that is going to be like, even yeah. just seeing the demo at its best mm -hmm. quality, I could see the weirdness that happened in that it was very, you know, Polar Express, you know, like, I, you know, it and was Pol oh Uncanny God, Valley. Alex, yeah. that is so, that's oh the my, poster that child was, for Uncanny so, Valley. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just think that I think that it was it's so close. And the problem is I would if so, if I had the choice of scanning my face and being in there or being my emoji. And I think this is one thing that Apple really has done well is the, Apple has the only emojis or style like that that looks that potentially looks better than you do when you put them turn them on whereas all the other ones are kind of like a you know metas and and uh snap and everything else they make ones that are, they all are like a dorky pretty dorky version of you and um and i think that apple apple has actually done a really good do job with emojis now we're kind of throwing that out and doing something that's going to be i'd rather be a cartoon than yeah. be uh something that's really close to my to my face you know so the other thing i thought was way advanced ahead of anything anybody else is doing. There is no physical controllers. It's looking at your hands and you don't have to put your hands in front of you. Your hands can be in your lap and the gestures, uh, similar to the uh, gestures Microsoft proposed for the HoloLens, but a lot, it looked like a lot more effective because, and this is, I think the most cool thing it's tied to your eye tracking. So they have, it sounds like very sophisticated eye tracking yeah. Yeah. because I mean, the interface requires, if you want to say, click an icon that you look at the icon, the icon, once it sees you looking at it, pulses a little bit. And then 
You tap two fingers together anywhere, like on your lap, and you click it. Your and eyes I, are the cursor. Your eyes are the cursor. Yeah. Uh, Marquez downward, Brownlee downward said, similarly, you could look at a field and then start talking and it would automatically, just as it does on the Apple TV, when you press the, the button, it would automatically fill in the, the field with text. Um, I think that's pretty innovative and does solve a problem that other uh, headsets have. And it really, well, you know, one of the things I really find puzzling, Meta's talked a lot about this. Microsoft talked a lot about this. Apple did too, is the use of these devices, not as entertainment devices, but as productivity tools. Mm -hmm. And if, and, and, you know, that's why the HoloLens had well, flicks and swipes and all sorts of weird gestures. They had a uh, gun gesture. Uh, well, and, and I don't know if that's really what anybody wants to do, do for a living. Well, and, and, and for HoloLens, they had the HoloLens that had a deltoid problem, which is that your shoulders, yeah. you know, you have you absolutely had to be up in front you know, of it. So raise you your hands. Everything you want to so do is, is smart. like this. Yeah. And so you had to hold your arms up for, if, if, again, if you're going to use it for a long period of time, two hours or something, it's not a big deal to do this every once in a while. It's a big deal if yeah, you're going to do it for I two agree. hours. You're going to be up like Fatigue this. Fatigue so is being an able issue to sit there and do what you in do. general with all of these which is how long do you want to wear this thing? It's going to get sweaty on your face. I don't care what kind of mm -hmm. custom muff you've made, uh, what kind of fans you have. And uh, and then there's the issue of, you know, it's just kind of an uncomfortable uh, s s setting. So Apple really has solved this by making sure that you can't wear it for more than two hours. The battery dies. Well, you can plug it in. <laughs> yeah, you can. Plug yeah, it. I was going to say. I was going to say. I was gonna say I but I wonder how hot it gets so when you use it that way. So it's exactly. a battery because pack was, that has a Type C connector on it, as well as the the uh, uh, proprietary thwock. connector that thwocks onto your uh, thwocks <laughs> yeah. onto your helmet. It's, it's, the the people who the people who got the demo say that it actually kind of twists and locks into the helmet, ah, which kind which kind which kind of which, which kind of, okay. which kind of makes sense because uh, moving around. Yeah, you don't want to. Well, not, well, not, not well, not not only that, but if it disconnects, you're suddenly completely blind. You crash. You, yeah, that, exactly. Because yeah. you you don't have you don't have see through. That's actually just cameras that are they're doing right. that. So the, they would want that to be locked in. Although that does, I wonder how much discussion they had on how long does this tether have to be to the battery? Because they're going to be if we if you have to say a requirement of using this device is that you have to have a shirt with a pocket in it, or you have to have clothes that have pockets in it. That's going to be a problem for. Oh, a lot I of people. can't wait for the third parties to start selling little pouches yeah. that. I can oh yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Like, yeah, get your. I'm waiting for your Hermes Scotty vest. <laughs> the, there'll be the Scotty vest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, vision <laughs> vision line. Right. They <laughs> also yeah, they also though like have a, a Type C connector on it. That's for charging it, obviously. But if you yeah. plug that into the wall or a computer or something, mm -hmm. I don't. We don't know how much voltage it needs, but it will presumably continue to operate forever. You can choose to operate yeah. your house or this, not both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 is what that is one of the few things that I that I spotted. Like, I wonder if they're waffling here. They said that you can use it all day. They didn't, but like like I kind of alluded to, did they say that theoretically it will it can draw power all day, or do they did are they saying that no 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 it's not ever going to overheat and give you a thermal shutdown like like the other headsets do after a certain amount of time? That will be. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they don't have that answer today, and they will have that exactly answer in January next year when it launches. Then we'll know what all day. There's a, there's, there's, there's got to be a reason why these demos last 30 minutes but then they kick you the hell out after 32 minutes like no, 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 take it off take it off now for god's sakes while they hose you down <laughs> <laughs> we studied thousands of heads said <laughs> apple that that caused a huge laugh in the audience yes <laughs> for sure <laughs> to create the most advanced personal electronics device ever and yeah pretty impressive <laughs> again a plus for technology a plus for uh execution um I think I the jury's to, still out on whether Stanford. this is a product anybody wants. I graduated Stanford, top my class. I got my, got got hired by Apple, like my first pick, and I spent my first six months measuring heads. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I know it's a number of tweets and social posts from people who said, you know, I've been working on this for, you know, my somebody said my 30% of my life, and I'm really <laughs> glad to see it out finally. I do not want to in any way... Uh, right. criticize anybody who worked on this. You have done brilliant work. It's amazing what you've created. You've taken a product category that was really not very acceptable and at least raised it to the level that people want to wear it. Uh, I am not, I am not quibbling with that whatsoever. It's very impressive what Apple's done. I'm just thinking from the point of view of a product, if, if it's going to be a yeah, uh, only time popular. will tell. And only time you will tell that. We can't guess. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, you know, I will be, I, I've kind of gone out on a limb here being Mr. Cranky, and but I will be 
sincerely surprised if in a few years this is this is something people are wearing i will be no i'm, I'm, I don't I'm glad this that. is part of the conversation because yeah. there this is this is apple is so good at running these events they're designed to dazzle people who don't have a lot of time to really sit and think they really have to publish like that day and so there is a lot of stuff that is like oh my god it's so bright it's so shiny i'm glad to see that in a lot of and most of the hands-on stuff that i've uh, 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 writings that i've seen it is it is very balanced about how i really i was really impressed with it but the thing is i did I, my head was a little tired after 30 when i took it off to, after 30 minutes it was kind of disorienting going back to the real world uh balanced by hey i could actually take notes on my phone that's how good like i could see through we have to make sure that we know that what we're seeing is kind of like what we saw in the very first iphone demo we're seeing the first they're they pulling it out of the barn all, all nice and shiny and bright so that putting it on the on that little turntable so that we can all take a look at it and take pictures of it this is not the time for where it's even possible Possible to really rate what it can do, how practical it is, uh, and how people are going to be able to even tolerate it on their heads. That's going to come probably in December when Marquez Brownlee and I, Justine, get there as a month before everybody else. Right. right. And I think Marquez's uh, video was actually pretty balanced. I was impressed by I thought so too. Uh, yeah. his video. I thought he did. If you're going to watch, I didn't see all of them. I didn't see Justine's. But uh, if you're going to watch one, I think that was a pretty good one to watch. He seemed to uh, have a, a fairly balanced point of uh, view on the on the whole thing. Yeah, uh, you in, can't you can't praise it. You can't slam it yet. It's no, it is just, what it it's is an interesting thing. And God bless him for uh, putting hundreds of billions of dollars. <laughs> and even you know the other thing that's unknown, even if it isn't something that people want now, Apple's going to spend so much marketing money. You're going to see ads on football like you've yeah. never seen. Right, I've already just, seen ads in social media places. Sure. It's a little weird to spend any money on advertising now since they don't have a yeah. product. But I think come this fall, depending on when they really plan to ship this, uh, you're going to start really seeing a blitz. I mean, if you spend $100 billion developing a product, you can spend $10 billion advertising yeah. it. $10 billion is a lot of ad time. And by this the way, i just like to say, Apple? as negative as I've been about the Vision <laughs> Pro, we certainly would love some... <laughs> Advertising dollars, a hundred million. That's all we ask. A, a fraction. Well, I'm going to say you're not going to get it. The by saying, talking the way you're I'm talking. not going to get it. You know what? That's the beauty of this is I don't have I anybody's exactly. ass to kiss. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> you know, Apple wrote me off years ago, probably rightly so. Uh, and I'm going to be honest. That's all. Uh, was it surprising to any of you that not once was the word or the letters AI uttered? Not once. They said machine learning, but that was it. They, and yeah. that's interesting because I have now the page from uh, the uh, co the uh, the tracks uh, at WWC up on my screen. And yeah, there's a whole big ML and vision track, mm -hmm. including detecting animal poses, <laughs> 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 discovering machine learning enhancements and create ML and lifting subjects from images in your app. But obviously there's a lot of AI in or machine really ai is a terrible term so let's say machine learning that's actually really a better term uh yeah. in everything in this uh in this vision pro i mean it's 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 doing a lot of work right oh yeah absolutely yeah uh, all right one more break and then i think we should unless okay i'll i'll i'll, I'll do a break in a bit but anything else anybody wants to say about the vision pro and apple's vision for this uh, scrolling 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 <laughs> i went through my uh my notes you know my uh my outline i do i do have to say craig federighi <laughs> it's a living god uh he was very much looking for the dad joke moment uh of course last time it was running his yeah. fingers through his hair as he ran from one set to the other this time it's playing right. is that real you think that i guess it no. is well, it's, I mean, I, the, the the coolest. I, I just I thought I I never thought I'd hear Ozzy Osbourne on a yeah he on he Ozzy really Osbourne shredded <laughs> on that and look at the Marshall stack. I I feel like he he might have given a little concert at one point. Like yeah, hmm. yeah I, for me oh, yeah. I, the quick thing I'll say is I would I'm most looking forward to what we hear about this device come fall come winter uh leading yeah. into the next year because uh everything that i have heard and learned and seen and am able to discuss um 
suggests that this is very much iPhone demo, a uh, first iPhone demo land right now. And <laughs> I would I, like to know what they couldn't I talk think, about yet because they can't promise it, yeah. but might eventually uh, be I, interesting. I, I, yeah. I also yeah. think they kept a lot of dry powder. Like I, the, yeah. they, that was much less than I think that they've, they've prepared. I think that as we get closer to the actual sell date, there's a lot of powder of what they can show that they didn't talk about at all. Um, really? That's there. So are you saying yeah. that? Cause you want it to be true. I just think that that might be nope. the case. I think, yeah. <laughs> well, that was a good look. Yeah, I, 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 Alex, <laughs> Alex knows something, I think, but okay, go ahead. Alex, I, I think I, uh, Alex, I think, I think you're very correct. Uh, but I'll, but I'll move Oddly, on to the, I'll I also move on think to... you're very correct. Huh. <laughs> I think you're very incorrect, but that that's because mm. I haven't signed any documents. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I'll, uh, but before, before we move off it, the, the last thing I wanted to say was just that, I'm actually kind of intrigued about the people that are going to buy it at least as they're, they're, there's everyone's going to have like a pie chart of how they justify the yep. $3,500 and, and and it's kind of they're going to say, like, oh, $600 for watching videos, $400 because it'll be a nice thing for uh, for gaming, uh, $800 because I really want to develop for this. But I, I think that one of the, for a lot of people, one of the biggest pieces of the, uh, of the pie chart are going to be being able to do spatial photography and spatial video, uh, the idea of being able to record the scenes around you, not because you're, you're, you're creating models or that you're making scenery for some other project, but just to capture something in the greatest fidelity. I agree that, oh my God, if you're playing, if you're spending your limited time on this earth with your th adorable three-year-old child and you have this big half of a watermelon on your face, I don't, I think you, I think you're parenting. I think you, I don't think them, it's, I don't think it's, but, but, what what I, but when I'm, uh, I'm sorry, when I, when I, but but just to, just to finish off, but the uh, I, I still remember a number of years ago, I tested uh, and read a, wrote a review of Sony had these digital uh, HD 3D binoculars where it was looked like very, very traditional binoculars. But essentially, each half was essentially a, 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 a an HD camcorder that was giving you video. And the number of time and during the month that I had it, I would do things like I would be at Fanel Hall and I would with just with my binoculars be watching like a street performance and then to be back like in my house and put these things up to my face and to be watching this again in 3d with decent, with decent video and everything. That was a powerful, powerful yeah. thing. And, and so the idea, if, if $3,500 is going to be a bit rich, but I could see somebody who, okay. If, if I, if I, if I had made better professional and or financial decisions 20 years ago, uh, and I had that kind of money to spend, I would be really keen to buy it. Again, 40% of that pie would be, I just want to take shots of where I am right now, not to replace my life, but because later on, I think I'm going to be, enjoy the fact that I have these like immersive 3d recordings of this space that I'm in that I like. And, and I think that the, the other thing is, is that I, I, so I thought that was one of the most compelling things about Google Glass was that I could look up and I could say, you know, um, Google take a video or whatever, and it would start to record. And I have these incredible little videos that I found. I just found recently on my Google account of my kids when they're much younger from my point of view, now only in 2D and 720p. I'm going to assume that this is going to capture the video probably pretty close to the resolution that I'm looking at it at 4K because they can do that with their phone little, you know, the phone can do it. So they can probably do it there. If I'm getting those, the, there's there's two things there. One is that there's going to be a, I think, an interesting market for shooting things that you want to experience. Another thing is to shoot things of the family, and when other people have these headsets, um, you know, I think that shooting for them will be also you know interesting. And I think you're going to see people going to a sporting event or other things, and and shooting something for someone that's in 3D that is all there, and they can then watch it yeah. as if they were as if they were there. And I think that's going to be an interesting little model that that occurs there. It's, it's going to be an interesting driver for when the people, the first adopters will be shooting all this video. And maybe a lot of people, when it comes down to 1500 and they're like, Oh, I really wish it were a thousand dollars. But now that I see that, Ooh, this is, there are these three or four different VR channels that people are telling me about, about people who were at live events that recorded really, really well. I, yeah. And finally, finally, I did the, I did the think that since, since you mentioned it, I did think that was really, really interesting because that was the exact same demo that was in like the intro of Google glass. Like, Hey, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a mother and I'm watching, I'm wearing, I'm able to play with with my child 
have eye contact with her, play with her while still like capturing this moment in video without feeling as though like I'm parked behind a camcorder. So I thought that was an interesting bit of like cross cross pollination. Glass, glass was a little bit more years. transparent. Like for yeah, this, exactly. for the Apple one, it'd be more like I'm going to take a moment with this and I'm going to put them back because Hello, I don't I'm want plastic my kids. Man, I just really need to know if I can shower with vision or not. Uh, oh God. To be waterproof. <laughs> I think it's sad that people want a life so different from the life they're leading that they're willing to. Didn't you point that out, though, that there's a lot of um, media that sort of centers around getting out of the life they're living because everything is bleak and horrible and uh, every we're all single going to use eventually have of, to stay inside because it's too hot. Every single use of VR in fiction mm -hmm. and in film is because they're escaping from dystopia, mm -hmm. whether it's Ready Player One or Snow Crash we're a neuromancer. It's -E. always to escape at Wally. -E. Uh, and you know what? That is probably the single best reason these are going to succeed because we're going to be in a living hell in about 50 years. Yeah. So uh, here's the, <laughs> get me the glasses, <laughs> by the way, we, uh, we already, this is a little, I to, I cut this out of our Mr. whiteboard Rebel. in the other studio. Uh, we've already started talking about what we might call the next <laughs> shows this week. Here, here's, here we go. Welcome to This Week in Vision. Vision Today. It's Vision Weekly or Hands on Vision. <laughs> no, Hands on Vision. That's How about Eyes on Vision? Oh, that's funny. Ooh. Pin, never mind. You want to host that? Eyes Boom. on Vision? I was going to say pinch I'll buy you vision, one of those. I don't think that's Pinch me. Idea. We have to do the whole show, though. I think, the, I think the whole show has to be done in the, you know, as a FaceTime in the GOG. In yeah, the I think that. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, eventually we will we'd be offer replaced you, with those. Uh, yeah, we'd offer you that uh, 3D stereoscopic view of the show. You could wander around behind us. Yeah, yeah. You know, Apple announced some things that people actually want. Believe it or not, and can get, <laughs> and more importantly, can even buy. We'll talk about that in just a bit uh, with our fabulous panel. Our fabulous. show today, fabulous, brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Did you know this is a wild stat? On average, it takes 11 weeks to hire for an open position. 11 weeks. That's almost three months. That's a quarter. That's all. That's time that everybody else has to work extra hard to fill in the, the gaps. That's the, that's the amount of time, 11 weeks, that the manager, ha your boss, or, or you, if you're the boss, has to go through this kind of not pleasant process of finding people. Do you really have that kind of time? <laughs> no, no, but good news. You don't have to. If you're listening today, I got some great advice for you. Do what we do. We had an opening in our, uh, I've mentioned this before, in our uh, continuity department when our uh, wonderful Ashley decided to, you know, she wanted to work a little closer to home. She had a long commute. Uh, so she gave us two weeks notice. We immediately, I remember Lisa doing this. It was at breakfast, went to Zip Recruiter. We've done it many times before, posted the job. Within literally an hour or two, we started getting, I love it because Lisa's very, you know, it's stressful. She's going, oh, what are we going to do? I don't know. We're going to admit you were down a person. It's going to be very hard. Two weeks from now, I'm going to have to work, you know, eight hours extra, whatever. Within an hour after posting, she said, oh, this person's, oh, this person's, we ended up getting, I think, three or four really, it was very tough. We chose the best though, Viva. We love you. And we're so glad we use ZipRecruiter. Stop waiting. Start using ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter can help you find qualified candidates for all your roles fast. And right now you can try it for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. There's so many things to love about ZipRecruiter. I'll tell you some of the ones that we love. One, you're posting the large, you know, you're casting a broad net, the largest possible group of people. Because if you if you agree the right person is there somewhere, you got to reach them, right? So one post on ZipRecruiter goes to 100 plus job boards. It goes to social networks. It goes everywhere. Now you've cast a wide net, but you might say, in fact, if you've ever done this before, I know what you're saying. You're saying, but I don't want them all to call me. Are they going to all email me? No, it does. No, that's the beauty of it. It all goes into the ZipRecruiter interface. Uh, they even reformat resumes so they all they're easily scanned because they're all in the same format. They even allow you to add screening questions, true, false, multiple choice, even essays. So you can screen out people who just don't fit right away. You don't waste any time looking at those. And then you can quickly rank the people, eliminate the ones that don't fit, hire the right one fast. It's so great. So that's 
that's one thing I, I love about ZipRecruiter. Another one, though, that's really amazing, they use their... This is, they, they have more than a million current resumes on file because people come to ZipRecruiter looking for work, right? So they use their powerful matching technology to quickly find and send the most qualified people to you. So in addition to the applications you're going to get, you're also going to get a message from ZipRecruiter saying, hey, look, we found these five people who, who seem to fit their your, your needs. Maybe you'd want to talk to them. And then you look at who you like and you invite those people. Those people, by the way, really are great because they're going to respond to you. They're so flattered that you ask. They show up for the interviews. It's really great. I think it's no surprise that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Frankly, we, we, we got them within the first hour. Speed up your hiring process with ZipRecruiter. See why 3.8 million businesses have come to ZipRecruiter for their hiring needs. Go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter free. ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. ZipRecruiter.com slash M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K. You'll see how easy it is, how fast it is, and how quickly you get the right person. ZipRecruiter. It's the smartest way to hire. Thank you, ZipRecruiter, for supporting MacBreak Weekly. Uh, you support it when you use that address. That way they know you saw it here. ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. Uh, oh, goody, goody. They started right at the beginning with Max. I love that. No, <laughs> wasted no time to leap into the thing I care the most about. And we had heard that they might announce a MacBook Air 15 inch. Mm -hmm. And indeed they did. And the, and the, and the words that warmed me to the bottom of my heart, uh, pre-order today, shipping next week. Yeah. I ordered immediately. And uh, mine comes next Tuesday. Nice. What color? Uh, I So I have, like you, in fact, this is why I didn't really need this. I have the M2 Midnight Blue. Mm -hmm. um, but my daughter needs a new computer. <laughs> That's my excuse. So, <laughs> so I'm going to give, because she has a really old MacBook Air. So I'm going to give her this one. Mm -hmm. And I got the 15 inch, but I, I couldn't bring myself to get the Midnight because of the fingerprint problem. Fair enough. And at least I got a MacBook Pro that was silver, like old school. Uh -huh. And I thought, wow, I remember those days. I thought for nostalgia reasons. I, got I wished I had the silver one when I was at the event yesterday because right as the event started, the sun was still beating down on us and this darker color was absorbing heat. So I had this on my lap. I put my hands on it, about <laughs> burned my hands. Luckily, as the event went on, the sun moved behind us. So it wasn't as much of an issue. But uh, Dan Morin had the silver one. And I thought, oh, I wish I had that one. I've also discovered it's very handy for blinding people, uh, the keynote speakers, uh, with <laughs> yeah. your laptop when you <laughs> hold it up and show it to them. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, Andy, you coined this and I love this. The, uh, what is it? Feature quilt? Feature, feature quilt. quilt. I yes. love that. It's a feature quilt for the, uh, MacBook Air 15. It's MagSafe Touch ID. Really, actually, you don't even need this. It's exactly the same as the 13.3. Yeah. It's just a little bit bigger. And interestingly, I did some calculations. I was very pleased to see same dots per inch as the 13.6, okay, which so means we were wondering I am going to get an inch more. I'm going to get about 200 uh, pixels more top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So that's an inch more. And I think a little more than an inch on the sides. So it will give me more real estate. I was worried that the dots per inch, the pixels per inch were going to go down. And so it would just be bigger icons. But no, good news. I think... Honestly, also the best thing about this is that it resulted in the price drop on the 13. Yeah, 100 bucks off on the 13 and on the M1. Mm -hmm. So this is Apple's best-selling Macintosh and will continue to do so. I think the 15-inch, yeah. they're smart to do this. this. I think there will be a real market for it. Uh, they also are giving you a 10-core GPU, which was uh, one of the things you had to do in, a, in, a, in, a, in an ups, uh, yeah. upsell, a build right. order for the... Uh, uh, the 13.6 uh, inch and they're giving you the six speaker sound system that the MacBook Pro has. That was one thing I was unhappy with on the MacBook Air uh, was the sound wasn't great. And I missed Lisa's MacBook Pro 14 sounds so good. Oh, wow. I never listened to audio out of this thing. Yeah, it really sounds good. 24 gigs of memory, the Max. That's a little disappointing. Two terabytes of storage. I, that's where you go I, to I the Pro, they're right? actually. Yeah, I think that they're making a pretty good separation between the Pro and the mm -hmm. and the Air. The Air is great. It's got a, a lot of real estate. 
It's definitely not a pro computer. Like no. it's not like, a, and I don't think we have any mistakes as pro users that that we should be no. using in air to do what we do. But the M2 it's is not, so good. It's, it's so good that you really can do a lot. I mean, I okay, I'm not going to do it, photogrammetry, but it's great for what I, what most people do, right? Yeah, yeah I, I I think that for most people who are not doing a lot of you know media and so on and so forth, I think it's going to be great. I, I think that you creating know, media, not time, viewing media, creating cre media. creating media, hundred yes. percent. Yeah, and so I think that. The extra, the, the two extra uh, Thunderbolt is very important. Anytime I'm on the road with a MacBook Pro, I use all of those ports. Yeah, <laughs> so, they're so smart need, to limit the RAM there. and to limit yeah, the and, ports because that's what makes love, it less than a Pro. And sure. I would love to make the Pro ones beefier. You know, I would, yeah. I, I would love to add an eighth of an inch to it and have it last fifty percent longer or a hundred percent longer. Because, uh, you know, when you're typing in numbers, it's it's 18 hours or whatever. But when I'm rendering in compressor or Cinema right. 4D, it's like three hours. And so oh, I, wow. so when, yeah. so, so I, I need to, uh, you know, I, I, we definitely need, uh, you know, I think the Mac Pros, I'd love to see them get beefier and thicker and more powerful and, and have the airs continue to hold that space so that Apple's not trying to do the same thing with both of them. This is the GarageBand iMovie computer. You're yeah. looking at the final cut. Logic computer. And that's I mean, the difference. I'll, I'll be honest. Final Cut and Logic, I'm sure, would run for many small projects, would run just yeah. fine on the air. Yeah. Uh, where it becomes problematic is, again, when, when you start to, to do long renders, it's going to be heat. Um, you know, it, there, there's going to be some heat throttling there on long renders, as well as the lack of uh, Thunderbolt ports is a big deal. Because one of them is power, I think. Yeah. Oh, no, it has, it has a... No, it has a MagSafe. Has a MagSafe. So it's MagSafe plus two. Uh, mm. Weirdly, 18 hours battery life across the line. There's no improvement, even though you have more space. I'm thinking maybe they, are, that's why they have they six speakers. Point, like, make sure. <laughs> yeah, the speaker is the uh, 10 core base. So do I need more battery or do I need more speaker? I want more speaker. I know. I think that was a good 18 hours is plenty for me. And that's, yeah. they say you watching if you're using an TV, Air, I think it's fine. I think yeah. if you're using a Mac, again, because it's not, that's well, good news. a use case. Guess what? They also updated the Mac Studios to massive horsepower, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the M2 Ultra the studios look great. is a, the, the largest uh, chip, 76 core GPU, 24 core CPU mm -hmm. up to now. I have to say for a pro, uh, I've been told I, I can't imagine this 192 gigabytes of RAM is not enough. It's it. It's pretty good. I mean, like there's not that many people. I mean, well, when you get into really big renders and photogrammetry yeah, exactly. and other things like that, there's and, and science calculations. And so, right. so there's a bunch of things that you have to hold all in RAM at one time. And so 192 can be limited, but that that market is crazy small. Like yeah. there's one thing to be small market and then there's a, to be a tiny, tiny little market um, that, that that would need that that much more RAM. Um, but but I do think that that. For the most part, 192 is a pretty, I mean, it's amazing. I had to write a three page paper to go from 128 megabytes of RAM to, to 192 megabytes of RAM, megabytes Bytes. Uh, for Star Wars. Megabytes. And yeah. that's what I was rendering. Yeah. With, you know, and yeah. so. No, 192 big, is quite a bit. <laughs> so much. So much. So and great. that's an important point. Somebody saying, you mean of GPU memory? No, of unified memory. So <laughs> yeah. that is a point is yeah. that your GPU can use it. Uh, so, it's, it's, you know. That's stunning. Yeah, that's a lot for a GPU. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They mention it on the the uh, feature quilt for the Mac Studios, but it's, I think, also true of all M2s. There's a neural engine. And the, the key on this is very interesting because Microsoft, which is still stuck with Qualcomm and Intel, has been hurting because of this. They've been talking about NPUs for a long time. Uh, they coined the term neural processing unit. But only the Qualcomm chips have NPUs. They're waiting for this fall when Intel will announce Meteor Lake and, and put out an NPU-based uh, Intel platform. So Apple has a real advantage because all of their hardware now comes with a neural processing engine. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal, I think. Uh, yeah, not, not for generating. Not You don't use it for generating models, but you use it for all of the kinds of things. Running. Running. Yeah, it's Runnings. kind of wild how Running much models. that, yeah. you know, even we looked at, um, is it, wow, and I can't think of his name, uh, the law, is it Moore's law? Yeah, Gordon Moore. Yeah, yeah. so Moore's yeah. law, mm -hmm. um, when sort of modern computer uh, architecture folks have tried to look at how to sort of keep that vision alive, they have turned increasingly to these neural engines as a way to uh, sort of 
figure out how to bridge the gap between how much smaller we can now make transistors versus what we would expect to see according to Moore's law. And so, yes, it's every aspect of your use of the machine where that neural engine is trying to do things in a way that is smarter, which then makes it work faster, makes it process better. 31.6 31.6 trillion operations per second. I can't, I can't fathom. <laughs> How much is 31.6 trillion, right? It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're talking teraflops here. This is, this is, you know, terra teraflops. This is incredible. Um, and by the way, the, the, the eight, the eight K, uh, playback, they talk about a lot of streams of playback. The eight K, uh, sounds esoteric until you think about the headset. <laughs> yeah, that's that is an 8K, right. 8K. There's two 4K uh, screens. 8K solution. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 800 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth on the Mac Studio. I have to say, I have the original Mac Studio, and I have never felt in any way harmed and or I hampered. I even have the one that's not ultra, and I've never yeah. felt. No, hampered. I have a I have a, a Pro. Lisa got the Max uh, M1, and uh, these are way faster than I need. So these are impressive. I didn't ask this. Did they increase the number of displays the MacBook Air could handle? No, they did not. No, but I think it's it's still it's one still external. Six K, but yeah. it's, a, it's a really really good external display, like six. Yeah, really good. And, and, yeah, and and the great. I hate. I, I'm sorry that Apple has beaten me down to this level, but I was so excited that it still has a headphone jack. Thank yeah. you, Apple, for not <laughs> removing the headphone jack from no, my laptop. Isn't that sad? The courage port I still use is one missing. Of my studio. It's it's I, I definitely still use one of my studio if I really need to Hell figure yeah. out where the I yeah. use it. Are you kidding? Yeah. I mean I'm not using it right now, but I but No, I I, I have a, an extension cable plugged into it. So if I need to, I can plug yeah. the headphones into it. Mm. Uh the new uh studio will support up to six <laughs> count them six Pro Display XDRs. <laughs> I want six. Now forget VR. How dare you. Forget Vision Pro. <laughs> I'm gonna spend ten times as much. And I'm gonna have my I don't have to wear a helmet. I'll just sit down. It'll be great. <laughs> well, I have six right now. I, I, mean, I, I bet you do. The same of course computer, you do. But there's yeah. array. Of course you do. Again, the, the, the NORAD set at the end of war games. That is my ideal. <laughs> that thought, ideal thought, work setup. I thought that was a good start. So this studio really for uh, I would say the vast majority of people is uh, as much yeah. as one yeah. would ever need. Yeah, I mean I think that the big the, the only thing that you really what you get with the the pro as you as you start to move up is the is the increased number of lanes of of Thunderbolt and the PCIe's the, the the slots, you know. So having being able to add six cards for IO and being able to have a lot more I um a, a lot more lanes for the Thunderbolt or the big well, I think this is important that. because, uh, yes, they finally said we have a Mac Pro. Same, it's the same case, but it's <laughs> it's it got a shrink ray a little bit. I can't tell. I couldn't tell. Did you see it? Yeah, I actually got uh, there's a video of that. Is as it well. cute little toaster? Uh, supposed it's, to wash it's it in cold, not a, warm. It's about the size of a bread box. Okay, um, bread box sized computer. bread box sized computer. I will say this: uh, Apple. See, that in, looks look that looks little. It's definitely smaller. Next to a, the XDR display, that looks good. It's 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 like the new Mac Two CI. Yeah, yeah. it's really cute. <laughs> I love if, that computer. If, I got it. Frog, Frog Design lost like the contract for for industrial design, and I've got the, there we go. That I think is kind of a cool look at the end. And you can open it up. So this is. I have to say, there isn't a lot of technical difference between no the Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra and the Mac Pro with the M2 Ultra, and that is on purpose. Apple, in talking with journalists, um, has positioned these two models uh, as options. The M2 Ultra uh, Mac Studio is meant to be the one for people, for companies or whomever who don't want to do a lot of thinking. That who just want to, I need a, I need the machine that just does what I need it to do. You get it. It's all in one package. I should say thinking and tinkering. Wait a minute, 134 billion transistors for people who don't want to do any thinking. This is yes. yes. In, in trying to pick what they're <laughs> after. Outsource you get job, this machine. It does what you need it to do. Whereas if you want to tinker, if you want to play around and build purpose, build exactly what you want, that's where the Mac pro comes in. Well, it's and- they're, they're both fantastic machines. It's the choice between the two. And I love that. I love what Apple did there, which is that we don't feel like we're getting less to buy a studio. We can break mm-hmm. out the, the the Mac Studio and have it be a great computer to do. If I'm a three D, if I'm doing three D rendering, I I feel like I can just go to the Mac Studio as easily as I could go to the Mac Pro. But if I need to do video I O, then I know that I need the Mac. Pro. I probably want the Mac Pro because I'm now going to 
um, want all like when I do a video production with my studio, like if I'm using Mimo Live and I, you know, wire all those things in, I'm using literally every port on the studio. Like it is every there's a wire going into each one of those for the monitor outs, the camera ins, the all the other things. You know, I would much rather that's the kind of thing I'd rather do on a on a Mac Pro. And you so are that paying that's... for that capability. So uh, Keith five twelve in our IRC configured a Mac Studio and a Mac Pro with the same base hardware, 24 core CPU, 60 core GPU, the maxed out RAM. And that's interesting. This The Pro only goes to 192 gigs as well. He put a terabyte SSD in. Now, this is in the, the UK. So it was 5,799 pounds for the studio, 8,799 pounds for the Mac Pro. So for those, PC, and those PCI 4 lanes and way more thunderbolt ports way more thunderbolt <laughs> ports uh and, and if you're yeah. it's again if you know what you need then then you need that That's like a, it's a I lot have, more but you, you're gonna get so in comparison to the boxes. intel mac so pro <laughs> which was what yeah yeah i mean well and that yeah, by the way forty thousand dollars cheaper <laughs> you can stop comparing your intel your yeah, intel really max like with your mac apple silicon max Nobody's buying those guys. Those are not. They're still. They're still. I don't. I, do they they're still selling them? them. Yeah, I know they're selling. There them. are things that. There, yeah, there well, are like a discrete GPU. You want a Radeon card in there? Mm. Guess what? Right. You ain't putting it in the new or, Mac Pro. Or that that much RAM, or you know, there's a couple of different things that that one still does that the other that the, the new one doesn't. So it's, there's definitely reasons to have the Intel. Yeah, no, I understand, but uh, there's no reason to compare your performance to the Intel. That's just that's just like uh, hand waving. I think they'll it's, stop doing it now that they it's, can stop. Yeah, because yeah. they've made it. <laughs> so made it, the the most expensive this point. the most expensive M2 Ultra Mac Pro is forty thousand dollars cheaper according to the Verge, than the maxed out Intel version. I think that's probably the RAM because the Intel one would go to two, two and a half terabytes of RAM, right? It was, it was, it was a lot more. Something insane. Yeah. Uh, something insane. But something, something yeah, really high. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's apples and oranges at that point. Uh, people though. I mean, would, so tell me about this. This is the issue. I think the Jeep, the discrete GPU, even though you have PCI bus on there, what can you well, put in those slots? I mean, well, like video cards, you know, for one. So video okay. and audio IO cards are IO. all things that you would. It's for you know, IO. So I, it's really, it, I think that that's the, I don't know if that's the only market, but that's the biggest market. You can also put in more hard drive. You yep, can put Apple's in solid state hard drive. SSDs. You know, uh, hard, yeah. So you can put in these NVM, very large NVMe cards that are like 32 terabytes or whatever right. that you can drop into there. So there's definitely some, um, you know, but IO drive systems, network systems, you know, but, but things getting in and out of the computer. Um, it's not going to do a GPU, which is unfortunate. I mean, a lot of us r wish that we could put an NVIDIA card in because there's a bunch of like custom processes in yeah, the you, NVIDIA you card. You've got now. CUDA cores and you, you know, you yeah, can't, but, you but that's never going to happen. So yeah. Give that up. So, so the, um, but so the, uh, you know, but I, but I, I, you know, it's not that we don't want them. We just stop thinking about it. <laughs> so it's too far away. Yeah. But, but the, um, but the, uh, I think that it's, 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 you know, you have an incredible workhorse of, you know, like, so for instance, we were talking about it this morning on office hours that, uh, that zoom, you know, if, if, the, if we, if we could get enough bandwidth, we could lit pull 48, 48 individual 1080p signals out of that computer with the cards. You just drop the cards in that we buy sonnet boxes for right now. Mm -hmm. And you'd have one box pulling 48 and which sounds crazy unless you're doing a virtual event. You know, so if you're doing an event, you want to grab everybody and be able to jump between everybody and move around. Having all those ISOs might, you know, might make sense. So, so those are things. But right now, there's other other limitations. But it's it's not. It's for a very specific. You know, it absolutely is. Well, and it's going to be. It's it, so. Yes, it's going to be for it, what it should be is for a very specific group of people. But you know, I live in Marin, and you know the the there's a lot of jeeps in Marin, um, <laughs> and they are all super clean. They're not going and, off road. Uh, there's no dents. <laughs> no one's using that jeep for what the way. I mean, they have, and, and we're talking about the Rubicons. You know, there's a lot of Rubicons in in Marin uh, that are pristine you know and so and they even have all the rigs and everything else so there's a market there for the folks that i would that buy for that case if i if i had more money than cents that's a beautiful it's a beautiful exactly. it's that johnny there's, there's be, cheese grater it's gorgeous there's gonna be like hollywood producers that yeah, have it yeah, on their yeah, desk yeah. Yes. and you know exactly all that stuff, you know? yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get the promise one block of cheese on it. The promise Pegasus R4i 32 terabyte RAID module for the Mac Pro. Yeah. 
plug it right in. That gives you 32 yeah. terabytes for three grand. You know exactly. what? That's actually that's the kind of thing. Not bad. It's a pretty you know? good deal. And less than I the mean, Vision Pro uh, headset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can you can put enough enough hard drive space into that into the computer that that you can get yourself into an enormous amount of trouble. Like if it goes bad, <laughs> you know, like it's like it's like it's like you put a, I got 192 terabytes of drive space in there, and the whole thing you know goes what? south. So they, I'm, it's, it's, it breaks my heart. Disney just fired the woman who saved Toy Story two. You know this oh. story, right? Uh, they ac somebody accidentally deleted the renders for Toy Story 2. <laughs> the movie what? basically was deleted. And then they went to the backups, and the backups weren't good because they had it misconfigured. DLT. They thought they were going to lose the movie, right? Right. Uh, then somebody says, you know, I was bringing this at home, working at home. I think I have all the files at home. Yeah, she probably had the promise 32 terabytes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. how big is Toy Story 2? Oh, anyway, goodness. they rushed over to her house, put the computer like in an egg carton, you know, and brought <laughs> it back and crossed their fingers because that's like years of work down the wow. tubes. They yeah. saved Toy Story 2. This poor person, I think she's a woman. I I, I'm judging yeah, I think, from the I, name. I believe so. I, I think she was on pregnancy leave uh, either before or after delivering. That's right. But, yeah, that's, that's why she that's, was working that's, at that's home. That's what I recall. And, and, and of uh, course, you know, you, you know how the poor the the person who deleted everything. It was like the classic. <gasps> was that <laughs> entering, entering, a, entering a certain line that says, "Oh, it's, I'll just delete everything from this folder," and then he puts a hyphen in there that shouldn't. Yeah. And there's an oh no, do this recursively to every single volume yeah. that's attached. Like oh dear. So yeah, Galen Sussman saved not, I, I the movie in, in 1998 because she had it at home. It's not the person who hit the lead that that, that was the problem. It was oh, whoever course, built yeah. an architecture that allowed that. Yeah. That, one, yes. that allowed one person to do it without turning two keys. You know, like it's, it's in addition, you know, and, and and in addition, like backups doesn't mean you back it up and then you put the the cartridge someplace. Like you periodically test your backup to make sure that your backups yeah. are good. So there's a big like, screw up. Uh, everybody but, had. Everybody uh, had sad to problem. say, now this was 1998. She still was still at uh, Pixar. Disney in their layoffs. I hope they laid off the guy who deleted the files mm. anyway. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, Galen Sussman is uh, is one of the people that uh, he's, has been laid off. So. He's he's still at the company. He's still like buried underneath the concrete piling from the new campus where he's been for the past thirteen years. Don't worry, he'll, he'll be with, he'll be at Pixar for a very very long time. He'll outlast everybody. Yeah, uh, you know, you think you'd have a job for life if you saved Toy Story two, but okay. Yeah, exactly. It turns out it's only 25 years. That's yeah. That's, that's all. That's all. all you get. That's all you get. Uh, so the Mac Pro is here. Hallelujah. 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 We can all stop thinking about it. The two Macs that were not updated, the Mac Mini. Well, that just got updated, so I understand that. And I think there are probably a few people saying, "Where's my iMac?" We think that that's continuing. Is it over? Eh. I don't think it's a priority in any way, shape, or form. You got the studio. Yeah. Well, Lisa, for instance, uh, still uses an iMac uh, in her office. Uh, it's getting flaky and old, and she wants a new one. I said, honey, you're not going to like the new one. It's not 27 inches. It's 21 inches. Uh, well, and that's the... That's the whole thing. I think they they have like here's people still want that, you know, and as long as it sells enough to make it worth it, I think they'll keep on releasing it. But I think that uh, they definitely the, the the Mac Mini is in a different place now, where it, it's it's much yeah. more modular. You can decide, you know, what you want. It's a lot less expensive. You know, the the thing that really wears out is the screen and the screen size. And now you can buy a bigger screen for it. And I don't really think that. I mean, I just now I say that I just bought an, an iMac for my my parents in law. Um, because they had one before and it's all in one place and you can plug it all in and it just works. And yeah. so I, I definitely see the value of keeping something like that around. But, but I think that for almost everybody, I think that the Mac mini makes more sense. Can we just uh, say that Apple's not going to make another one or is they still somewhere back in the labs I, have a 32 I, inch? I wouldn't be surprised if they don't do updates. I don't think I, getting a larger one, I very much doubt. I think I it's 21 much. inches. It's going to be, you know, it's not going to get much. It maybe gets up to 24 at some point for whatever reason, but it's never going to be another big one. Yeah. Uh, it is going to be a, you know, it's going to be an entry level computer. They're not going to make a pro version of it. They've got too many other pro things that are out there. Um, so I think that it's going to be a, you know, a basic computer for kids that are going to school or, or, yeah. or folks that are retired and just want something that they can turn on. 
it's going to be the computer you buy in, in 12 packs, either because you have a co- small company or a school classroom. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah, that's blister packs. Right. Otherwise, otherwise, Apple, anyone who, I think anybody who comes into an Apple store looking for an iMac, there is a, there is a training video that says, try to get them to buy a MacBook Air for God's sake. Let's you're a, you know, them. a studio with a nice display. That's what I'm working on. Lisa, we'll get you a nice display. If we can get one that matches the other display you're using, we get a studio. You won't know it's not an iMac, but you'll be happier because mm-hmm. it's going to be modular and it's going to be faster. And, well, and, and but it won't and, be yellow. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the yellow thing, one in in Rwanda we had you know some voltage issues and, and everything else going up and down. And over time, the iMacs we got forty iMacs. Yeah, it made you know, sense. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. and they and repairing them was super had, expensive. We should you explain know. he was teaching, so these were classes. It was school, yeah, school in Rwanda. Yeah, and and and. Uh, and the the problem that we've had is that is that it's replacing them after the you know the power supply or whatever it's getting trying to fix an iMac no, you is can't. No. non-trivial and so with a at the same we could for the same cost we could have just yeah. if we had monitors instead we could have just got another Mac Mini actually day. I think we're getting her a Mini right John I think we're just going to get her a nice they're, Mini they're really nice yeah they're fine that's all she needs yeah uh, you can have any big curve around monitor or anything else she has a forty nine inch curve. <laughs> Yeah. Curve around monitor and then the iMac. So I think we may get a matching, and now she's going to be in heaven. Oh man, two 49 inch ma- curve yeah. arounds. Get, get, get there two you that's vertical side by yeah, side. That's your vision. Or, or if you had four of them, you could have, you could, have this, you could go two Can you up. Imagine over. Yes, we're trying to put. That's what I want. <laughs> I, uh, I just want to see a picture of it. I don't need it, but I just want to see a picture. I, I'll tell you what I'm saving my money for. I'm not going to buy the Vision helmet, I'm going to buy. The 49 inch QD OLED curved monitor that uh, somebody's selling. I can't remember if it's LG or, but uh, that's the monitor, right? It's a, you know, it's a gaming monitor, I guess. Yeah. It's pretty. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm saving my money for. I'm, MSI, I guess it is. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Samsung too. Wait, so there are yeah, I have a QD OLED TV, which is incredible. It's the brightest it really, OLEDs oh, out there. They're really gorgeous. Kind of stunning. So Samsung is going to make a QD OLED. It's the Odyssey OLED G9. <laughs> Available for $12,000. you feel like you're getting a suntan? I can't afford a G6, but I'm getting a G9. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, it's not available yet, but, uh, it's, if it comes down to that of the Vision Pro, that's going to be. Do, do you feel be, the heat from the screen? No, QD OLEDs are not, uh, they're, <laughs> they're not, not hot. Before. They're nice. We were just, we just had a, we were at Cinegear, you know, this big filming thing over the weekend. They're not like and, plasmas. Uh, they, have, they had like a wall of, of these, <laughs> of these lights. And they said, we, we asked them, they said they get really bright and they can you turn the whole wall on. And when they turned it on, Ooh, it's like literally <laughs> changed the temperature. <laughs> like we were standing like, whoa, it wasn't just that it was bright. We just, it's a lot of heat. So we got to talk about uh, software. So that was the hardware. Mm-hmm. Are anybody buying any of that stuff? Any, anything? Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm the only one getting the 15 inch. Mm-hmm. I'll bring it in next week. I'm not going to get the pro right now, but I probably will get a pro this year. Sometime. If I, I, like I said, that M1 studio is really sweet still. I mean, the, the reason that I got the, the one, the studio was, and I didn't go for the ultra was, I was like, oh, I'm going to buy this. You knew you were going to buy the pro. All the right. funny thing is, is that I, I'm going to buy the Mac Pro, but I'm not going to spend more than $12,000. Like, literally, that's what I said. I was like, I'm not going to get some $60,000 machine. Um, and now I don't, I can't afford it right now. But, but maybe sometime later this year, I'll I'll sell a kidney or something. Well, let's, uh, let's configure uh, Alex's Mac Pro, shall we? Let's do it. Let's put it, let's put it all together. It's fun spending other people's money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, order now. Mac Pro starts at 7000 Let's, let's, I got some room. Let's, let's, let's see. see. Let's see. We got some room. Right. All right. Uh, right. You probably want the thousand yeah, dollar just, just upsell on the just processor. I, I got the room. I got the room. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Sixty core GPU versus seventy six. I think yeah. you want this. Now RAM. <laughs> All of it. All I, of I it. Okay. It's only <laughs> sixty. Rendering. Now we're at ten thousand. Okay, I hate to tell you. Right, I'm still under. And then you need to. So here's the deal: is the mistake I made with the studio is I bought one terabyte of drives. Yeah. And the drives are so fast that you should just get the eight. The internals are fast, but remember, we can get that promise card. I don't think, I still don't think it's going to be as fast as the internal drive speed. Yeah. So uh, we put eight terabytes of storage. You don't need the, you don't need the wheels. Skip the the $400 wheels, by the way. Glad to see they kept the wheels. (laughs) Glad to see they kept the wheels. They're not cheap. That's because they made a bunch of that. That's all you need, right? And we're $11,799. That's nothing. 
Now with taxes, I'd probably go over. So well, let's see. Uh, I should just put this on my bit. Apple card. That's practically free. Oh, do you need yeah, a yeah. new Do you Pro need a XDR? Well, I sure would like that. It's only five grand. Oh, wait a minute. I need nano texture glass. Oh, no, I don't want no. it. No. No? Comes with a rag. Okay. <laughs> um, and because I don't get the monitor, I don't get the, I don't want the stand. Though. See, John, I couldn't I, I'm thinking instead of having this crappy Lenovo, I could have an XDR display here on a Visa you mount. You can't touch it. Oh, you can't touch it. You can touch you can it, touch just it. won't do anything. It just doesn't do anything when you touch it. So that, that <laughs> people were fun. mad. I was really interested. So many people were mad that Apple didn't, you know, release the Vision Pro, but did not release a touchscreen Mac. Oh, come on. Come on, man. Yeah, I don't want to touch my Nobody, Mac. Nobody, I, think, I, I think swear to God, I have that, a lot of touchscreen laptops. Sales. Yes, and they're all, <laughs> never touch it. I hate it. Never even touch oh, this I, one. Oh, he touched it. When I, I <laughs> love it on my iPad with my keyboard never even and touch my this. iPad. can't touch this. Love that. Um, but I do not. Uh, I, I do not need it on my Mac. No. When I when when I when I do use it, I enjoy it, but that's not something that I need all the time. I, I'll have to say that I think that I think that one of the reasons why uh, Apple decided to put those like downward firing cameras uh, on the on the on the headset so you can do like touch controls like without having to lift your hands mm -hmm. is that they're, they're they know that all of us would be jumping on them for every yes. time uh, Apple yes. said people no the reason why we don't do touch screens on the Mac is people don't want to have to raise their hands right, to use right, the computers exactly. like ah damn right. I had I had an 800 word think piece all lined up how, now I can't how long use can it. we all we only have far. 15 more minutes in the show everybody stick your arm out if you can hold it out for that 15 minutes. Right. I can't believe how many people are doing it. <laughs> well, I, I, don't know, I don't know what I want to know what I get if I do it. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, You're going to touch okay. screen Mac. Uh, iOS 17 <laughs> looks good. In fact, you, you could actually by accident, they put out the developer version for oh, everybody. Yeah. So be careful. Yeah. Uh, the the public pre preview is next month is in July. I'm tempted. I don't want to get rid of Hey on Siri. Siri Ari is way over responsive. Just try saying you seriously. You do have options. Oh, good. So you, you can, can choose how, if you want to keep it hey, if you want to change it I'd like it to have it more than hey. Like, oh, hey, hey ooh, please you, listen you, here. You, you, hey. Um, I would recommend that if you want to give this a go as the, you folks who are developers and who are developers. Here is do, the host of iOS today. Do speaking. iPad OS, not good iOS. Idea. Because good idea, Rosemary this morning had to completely restore her <gasps> phone because of a bug in iOS before the show started. She's so, using the developer edition. Yeah, she's using developer betas for everything, of course. Um, I haven't installed any yet. I, I'm usually a lot quicker, but I was there, so I just haven't had time. Yeah. Um, I I will not be installing, I think, this iOS 17. I'll tell you what I want. But iPad OS for sure. I think the standby is cool, right? Standby is really cool. Uh, Android has had this if you use the, the Pixel we, stand. But we're all trying okay. to figure out what happened to the little... St who make, where's the stand? Where did that like, stand come from? It's just some MagSafe yeah. thing. Any MagSafe is stand it, would work. It, sure. Is it, is it, okay. Well, just, yeah. it, but it looked like one specific. It, <laughs> it looked, looked like... Specific. I was waiting for them to say, and only $99... For this finely yeah. crafted aluminum MagSafe stand. So yeah. it turns your uh, iPhone into a bedside. Actually, I guess the iPad too, into a bedside clock. Yeah, it's yeah. not called standby really, on iPad though. It's just that you've got um, you have that capability. customized lock screens and stuff. Yeah. Uh, name but drop is, looks great to me. It's gonna. It's the way to exchange business cards. It goes along with contact posters. So you will now make a contact poster with your face or your avatar or emoji or whatever. Mm -hmm. Picture of your dog. It doesn't matter. Your name contact information and that could be your business card and now you and i will meet and i will tap my tap. phone to yours by the way but only stand is from phone. 12 south and it's available in the apple store oh 12 south makes good stuff yeah mm -hmm. so that but, is but a real only stand. from the iphone right so so you'll you'll have oh 12 yeah. south okay 12 south yeah. is the maker yeah they, they make great but, stuff but, but how do you count how do you connect with your android friends no it's Oh, forget. Who uses Android? Might as well be a green bubble. You might as well be a green bubble at that point. This is, like, oh, mean, all of this stuff is guaranteed to piss off Android yeah. users. I can tell yeah, exactly. you. You'll be sent it. So you can make now that you can always make stickers, which was a cool feature. You press and hold Micah's face and then drag it. And now I get a Micah head sticker. Yep. But I can now do it with a live a picture, right? So that uh, he could be moving. And none of that works between iOS 17 and iOS 16 because Rosemary is trying to send me a bunch of oh. them this morning. So, so even you'll have to wait. So green bubbles are everybody who except iOS exactly. 17. Okay. Um, I think that's cool. Live voicemail with transcriptions. Mm hmm. Nice. Nice. One of the best features of the, of the Google Pixel. I have to tell you, so this is an duo, interesting- Duo, right? It's the Duo program that does that. Is something that right? interesting I learned yesterday about that live voicemail feature is Apple is kind of- um, 
spoofing this. It is something that happens locally on the device. And what is happening is the phone is essentially answering the call and then transcribing with the voice, like it plays your voicemail back and transcribes the conversation that takes place. And if you choose to hit answer, then all it's doing is letting you into the call that yeah. it's already taken. Otherwise it has it to do out. that. So it that way it doesn't have to involve the carrier. Exactly. Yeah. Makes it on device. I think that's fine. I don't, I don't yeah, no, that, I think that. it's a good thing. I thought, yeah. yeah uh, I think that's how Google It's a does pro, it, actually. not a con, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they've added, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the application you've all been waiting for, <laughs> Journal. Journal. <laughs> uh, you can, it's kind of like day one, but it's going to, it's a health thing, right? It's going to have prompts. Yeah. It's going to say, be grateful. What are you grateful for today? That kind of thing. I like I think that it can cool. look through your whole system and the activities that you're doing. That and so right. I can imagine, you know, I'm go, we go to an undisclosed location where they show us what it's like to make sound for movies. I don't know what that is. Don't know where that would um, be, but. And it's like, hey, you recently went to this place. Uh, what was that experience like? And then I got to write about having that. You know, th yeah. that's kind of a cool idea yeah. with the journal. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. So even better prompts. Even better, they made an API. Yes. So I love that. So, so day apps. one can add this feature, other other uh, journaling apps. Health is uh, also much improved, it looks like. Uh, in fact, health comes to the iPad. Finally. Finally. No calculator for you. Widgets <laughs> on the iPad. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, um, especially they're especially interactive. since yeah, yeah, exactly. They're they're, they're interactive, and also uh, the fact that you can build build a widget one place, and basically now, congratulations, your widget, the widget for your app, can now be deployed on the watch, can be deployed on the phone, can be on the desktop, can be out here and where the the value of creating a widget for your app just went up by like three hundred percent. For safety, I think the check-in feature is great. I have to. So here's what's amazing about this. I was talking about, as I always do, me use. I used to be worried about you going into a ditch, and so I you, made a shortcut. You actually, made a shortcut. Matthew made a shortcut <laughs> for uh, sharing your ETA, right? <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing about share ETA. I can see your dot and follow you along as you're going. And when I think about people who are out in the world, they, they might be going places, maybe they're friends, they don't feel comfortable sharing their exact location, but right. they would feel comfortable if in an emergency their location was shared. That's where check-in is different from what you have right yeah. now, because check-in will keep everything private unless you're in a situation where you need to, at which point then it will share your location and information like how much battery life you have left. I think this is a fantastic feature We've seen a few third-party apps try to do something like this, but not quite succeed at this level. So I can't wait for this to come out because yeah. I know that I would feel more comfortable using this with some folks where I wouldn't want to full on just give them my location. Yeah, that, that, that's a big deal. You just tell you just tell this feature, I, I, I expect to be home by four by by 9 p.m. When that doesn't happen, it'll try to contact you. If it doesn't, if you don't respond, it, the people that you, you've note that you've set up to be notified by this get like Mike said, not just your location, but hey, here's here's your here's your last time that you touch the phone. Here's the here's your battery status. Here's your cell phone status. Here's your Apple Watch status so that you can get all this stuff together. One thing that, I, that I'm, I've got, uh, I'm asking, I've asked Apple about this, haven't got a response back is I want to know what if you, what if, what if one of your emergency contacts does not have an iPhone or does not have an iPhone that is running iOS 17? Are they SOL or do they, or is it something where it will send an S it sends out an SMS. If it is received by the version of my message that runs on iOS 17, it gets re redesigned as one of these beautiful graphical sort of displays of what's going on. Because that would be quite a kick in the teeth if they said, yeah, we don't want you to be rescued by anybody who has Android. We feel right. as though that's a good way to pressure that friend if they really want to save your life to have an iPhone. <laughs> that is a good if question. If you cared, you would get an iPhone if you really cared. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Scooter X, pointing out that that little subtle thing, but Apple which has always charged $99 to be in the developer program and required that you be in the developer program to use the developer betas has now lifted that requirement. So the free version, just sign in with your Apple ID, continues to give you Xcode and all of that, but you also get OS beta releases. Oh, interesting. That's a new uh, dot on the uh, on the comparison list. So thank you, Scooter X, for, uh, for yeah, yeah. pointing that out. I think they should. That's great. Apple wants to uh, get people in the on the bus. You're either on the bus or you're off the Maybe. bus. I have to say the thing I was most excited about are 
audio message transcriptions because here's my problem. I love sending audio I transcriptions, too. but I hate receiving audio I do transcriptions. too because you have to listen to them. <laughs> or audio messages, yeah. I, my, exactly, you have to listen to them. I'm like, I don't want to type something out, so I'll happily send them. But I so usually what I do is dictate it, mm -hmm. but I think it's nice to have, I wonder if the Memoji audio will also As be As podcasters, we're very happy to send our voice yeah. to people, but my little brother <laughs> is notorious for sending me six minute long audio Oh, do the youngs messages. do that now? I was wondering. Yes. Yeah. And I don't want, I, I'm usually hey, Bro. doing something else. Yeah. So I just want to be able to read it real quick and see, oh, that's what he wants. I can respond super quick. So I'm really, I, whenever they announce that feature, I almost did a woo. Well, the, the audience yeah. sounds like they were fairly uh, vocal. So the press was mostly non-vocal um, as, 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 as we should be. And yeah. we were, you know, and so it's funny, I was asking the question, what almost made you clap? Because that's kind of what you had to do. But every, the developers, of course, were very vocal. And then that section between where there was the apps, app, Apple folks, obviously very vocal. Um, but yeah, it was only on occasion where you'd get the sounds like the price of the vision. Um, a few jokes uh, that came up, the name of that feature where you share your contact, the name drop feature that got a lot of laughs that was called name drop. Um, and then some of the stuff, like a few of the stickers were funny to people. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, airdrop. We'll let you, that's the contact thing, I guess. Where you well, but also I love this. If I'm sharing a video with someone and I need to leave before I can airdrop in the cloud, airdrop in the cloud. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I should also mention since I'm here, if you want a more in-depth look, Rosemary Orchard and I covered all iOS I and iPadOS I should, this morning. I should have mentioned that. Yeah. No. <laughs> we're just rehashing. So that's where we're going to move very uh, quickly. Uh, anything in the iPad OS 17 you thought uh, was worth? I love it that we're going to have widgets, oh, um, interactive widgets, which means we can. And lock screen customization. And too. lock screen customization Finally. comes to the iPad. But yes, those interactive widgets, this is great on both iPhone and iPad because more and more we're getting to the state where we don't necessarily need to open up an app, wait for it to load or whatever it happens to be and be able to access it. That right there on my, I, it's, it's almost like it's making it more Mac-like because my desktop is what I'm looking at instead of a home screen. Right. And I can interact with these little things. And I mean, I that's how it mentioned. should be. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Rosemary, I mentioned her name, was very excited that she could put shortcuts. In oh, the widgets on 100% the yeah. excited about that. Unfortunately, yeah. that's another thing that's not working right now on iOS. So her shortcuts app won't even open. Ah, so crash. she's for that. Yeah. Notes but is big, getting but much more. Thing. Go ahead, please. Andy. Yes, please. One, one really big thing that we that I really, really wanted for a long time, iOS, iPad OS 17 now supports external cameras. So you can plug in a webcam and actually use it. Oh, really? I didn't see that. That's great. Absolutely. That's cool. It was it was in the State of the Union uh, yesterday, and I've also seen other people talking about I it. So I FaceTime on my that. iPad almost all the time, and it's really yeah, weird it's, because it's sideways and the camera's over there, so I'm never looking at the camera. So an external when, camera would be very nice. When I'm traveling on a Tuesday, that's the only reason why I have to take my damn like MacBook with oh, me good. instead of just well, yeah, iPad. Take your now iPad. I can actually take this on my external. And some yeah. external. Uh, health comes to the iPad. We mentioned that much improved PDF features. I mean, basically you won't need a third party PDF app yeah, anymore. I feel kind of feeling for a lot of those yeah. uh, third party apps and notes is really, they keep improving notes. Notes is getting better and better. Trying to make it a little bit more like these tools, what LogSec and yeah, a the few P others. PKM tools, they call them personal knowledge management tools. You know what they didn't do a lot of hype and stage manager. Yeah, as you yeah. said, oh, I've got a few improvements. Um, I now I will say so. Christopher Lawley, who has been a guest on iOS today and is like the stage manager guru, he nearly stood whenever they said they made improvements to um, <laughs> to stage manager. There, whatever a lot of people are griping about who use stage manager, one of the things is sort of whenever you take a window and you try to move it around, it would sort of jostle everything around the place. They fixed that, uh, so that was exciting and. Um, oh, I forgot to mention in notes when we were talking about the log sec thing, one thing that they didn't announce, I believe on stage, but was in the, the little details is that you can link between notes. So one note can link to another one. And that's really that yeah. personal knowledge yeah. management feature. They're getting, yeah, notes. It's, good. it's too bad it's uh, not cross platform. That's yeah. the biggest uh, downside. Mm -hmm. Um, to that, but if you live in the Mac and the Apple ecosystem, I guess technically because you I can it, access it in the web. 
Yeah, yeah that's right. Notes. Yeah, no, yeah that's I've, good I've actually got grab notes when I need to go as PC and logged into iCloud to, to grab onto them. Oh, and okay. Good. I don't All have right. to do that very often, but, okay. but the notes, for those of us who are mostly 99% dealing with the, uh, the Mac, it is super <laughs> powerful. Ooh. Like it, I use it. It's like, yeah, thanks for all the time. Emmerich is saying... Classical music for iPad is now in the App Store. Oh, good. Yay. Andy and I are happy. Uh, biggest news of the whole event. Yes. Mac OS. So Sonoma. We are probably unjustifiably excited about that because we are, in fact, in Sonoma <laughs> County. I was so excited. And I was thinking about you all. And I thought, I bet they're very pumped oh, to hear that. So excited. People were kind of poo-pooing it where I was. And I thought, hey, well, they, listen. The way they led up to it, you know, Craig Federighi did his dad jokes about his crack team and all that. But the way they led up to it said they were going to wine country. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, crap, they're going to name it Napa. Oh, I, for some reason, from the beginning, I thought it's Sonoma. So well, I was really excited. Napa gets all the press, <laughs> right, all the fair. attention. And here we are in little old Sonoma Valley just next door. So I was very pleased that Apple uh, gave us that. Uh, and our wine is better. Other uh, things in Sonoma. I like that name. Uh, screensavers. Did people laugh? People said, rest in peace, Ariel. Because the, I don't know if you all know, that's the- That's that what I use Sherlock, on my Mac. Yeah. yeah. Um, which basically did this, the TV. This is even better though, there. because they're going to, they apparently added a bunch of new wallpapers, all of which mm -hmm. become alive. And that's the, the thing screen. is that they turn into your wallpaper, which is, yeah, it goes, yeah, from the lock screen to the wallpaper. Exactly. I love that. Uh, they have a bunch of stuff for Safari. Who cares? Oh, I okay. But profiles in Safari, I think is actually kind of neat. That's why you're here. This is why I'm here. I don't, I, I don't know if you folks feel that way, but I, so I'm a Safari user and that's one of the things that I did like about Chrome and about a few other browsers that exist out there are switching between profiles. So I was excited about yeah. that. Yeah. We, they're, they're also doing sharing of uh, logins and passwords. So if you have a, if you have a family that huge. all uses the same Netflix pack, yes. well, yeah, you don't have to basically sync between them. That makes uh, Apple Keychain is getting closer and closer to full fledged password manager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one of the last things that was still missing is the ability to share. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 actually quite huge. I will use that because Lisa's on a Mac. I'm on a Mac. Um, she is still using LastPass. I'm using Bitwarden, so I can't share through our password manager. But we both have Mac, so I can share through Keychain. Yes, that's they're doing, they're doing something similar with the with the Find My network, like but they are, you can have an AirTag that can be shared, that can be found by multiple people in yep. your yes. family or in your group, which is into, which is nice because okay that's great because maybe you and your spouse are equally invested in finding out where your suitcase wound up, but it's like if. Uh, they, they, there is a warning when you activate it saying, okay, by the way, that means that if someone's, if, if, if a family member has put one of these tags with you without your knowledge, it's not going to alert you that there's an air tag following you because this is your air tag. So make sure that you're not in a stocky sort of situation. So, but this, that's unavoidable, I suppose. We were talking about that on Twitter on uh, Sunday. A lot of spouses turn the find my on. I, Lisa and I have it on. So I know, you know, if she's delayed. She's still, I could look, oh, she's not still at work. Ditch. I don't have to start. Uh, right. dinner or whatever um those i think if you trust your spouse and you're not worried about them stalking you i think that's a that's a good right. safety feature and ac actually apple has really enhanced that uh to some degree which is great uh but i agree with you only do it if you really trust the other person you do have uh let's see web apps now this was one safari thing that i wanted to know more about and in fact I, i'll have to watch the track on this because apple's been laggard on progressive web apps which is a, a standard from google and microsoft and without safari participating fully pwa was kind of doa it sounds like apple is now turning it on but they didn't say pwa so i'm not sure if it's an apple feature a well, safari thing that's not progressive web apps or what I don't know. It, hook, it hooks up nice, nicely with a feature where now if you have a, a, a website that is a web app, you can now actually uh, have it as an app in the dock. Yep. So and notifications. Right. right. So they're so. clearly providing uh, some services. I, you know, I'm going to have to look into it in more detail. It really I, does feel like what you can do on iOS just brought to Mac OS, which is essentially right. wrapping it in its own window. As yeah, that's not so special, frankly. Yeah, that's not progressive web apps. But the fact that they can do notifications, I don't know, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, they brought that to iOS first right. uh, with notifications. Live stickers also come to Mac OS? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Mac OS is compatible with 2019 iMacs and later, 2019 Mac Pros and later, 2017 iMac Pros and later, Mac Studios, obviously, 
the MacBook Air from 2018 or later. So it has to be a fairly recent Air. Looks like, in fact, do you have to have Apple Silicon? I kinda, I'm wondering now. Mac Mini 2018 or later, MacBook Pro 2018 or later. So a lot of older hardware now left in the dust when it comes to uh, Sonoma. Anything Sunset that continues to cross the meridian. Well, yes. if you want to run game mode, then you obviously need a newer machine. Yeah, uh, game mode. Yeah. Woo <laughs> Well, see, it's, not, it's not it's not only it's not only game mode, but they've also for developers they've actually added a whole suite of tools for comp for uh, converting uh, Windows games to Mac, and it's really really quite a rich environment. Yeah, so they're that trying part to, was cool. Christina was talking about that, and I thought it was very interesting. They have effectively released DirectX 12 emulation for the Mac. Now they say it's a way for game developers to evaluate whether they can port their game to metal. Mm -hmm. But in fact, they have, and they are using crossover or wine. They're, they're, they're actually contributing to an open source project, but in a weird backhanded way through homebrew, the ability to run direct X 12 games in emulation on a Mac. That's very, to me, that's very interesting. Christina Warren noticed it and uh, started posting it. Here's a, here's a uh, actual video it says Apple hid something amazing for Mac gaming at WWDC. Uh, and so uh, Apple was actually showing Windows games running in Rosetta in DirectX yeah. 12. What? Yeah, so that's a pretty big deal. It'll, yeah. it'll convert your rent, it'll convert your, your your renders, it'll convert your shaders. It's it's ambitious. So let's see let's see if let's see if Windows gamers uh, game developers fall for it. Uh, I will uh, actually give credit to uh, the great Andrew Tsai, who noticed that he is an Apple developer. Uh, developed spam Civ, which is one oh, of the great okay. spam wow. tools. I think it's that Andrew Sai. So uh, his his video discovering this is a big deal, and I think it's very interesting. I suspect we'll see some open source uh, crossover on this. This was huge for Linux when the Steam Deck supported Proton for cross compatibility. Suddenly, all these Windows games ran beautifully on Linux, and I think this could be actually huge yep. for uh, Apple Silicon. As a as somebody who likes to play games, I'm, I'm this excites I'm me too. Yeah. It likes to play games and has a Mac Studio. You right. know what I mean? That right, would be, be great nice. and yeah. a nice screen. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, they talked oh, about oh. in uh, Mac OS as well. You can finally, with both the Studio Display or the iPhone, actually control the composition when you're using that center stage yes. feature. Finally, <laughs> uh, oh, Jason Snell when he heard this. You can Glory, tell them. Hallelujah. You can say, look, look to your left, look to your right. Yeah, you can thing. choose how the zoom and pan happens before. It was just automatic to try to recenter you, but it was sometimes kind of odd. Oh, yeah. So now you can choose between wide and ultra. Maybe wide they did modes. that because they also showed how you can do FaceTime on your Apple TV using continuity cam. That feature I'm so excited about. Uh, I, every, the past, ever since I moved here, every Thanksgiving and Christmas, I do this strange iPad dance with my family back home who only have iPhones. <laughs> and so they're trying to hold an iPhone and pass it around. And I'm getting sick looking at the iPad as they're passing it around. So the idea of, of course, it'll be, it'll require a little support call to get them to get it set up. But once that's done, we'll be able to have them up on the screen as we sort of celebrate our Christmas from a yeah, distance. Yeah, I, I FaceTime my mom every week and I can put her on our big screen in the living room wouldn't that be nice and have the camera over by the kitchen and we can we can have uh, thanksgiving or and great. great there's a session this is exciting there's a session at wwdc right now uh talking about using something called doc kit that will let developers interact with motorized docks for the iPhone. So what we're thinking Oh, I is, have one of those motorized docks. Uh-huh. So you thwack your iPhone onto this MagSafe dock, and then you can FaceTime from the television, and the dock <gasps> can move with you oh. as you're moving around your space. Okay. Uh, I see something here in video conferencing called a bubble overlay, although I wrote, Bubble Loverlay. <laughs> and I think that was Freudian. I don't. The Bubble Loverlay <laughs> is. I don't know what that is. I'm kind of annoyed by this because they took this from iOS today. No, I kid. It Rose, was your idea. Rosemary Orchard and I, when we do our show in the morning, we have, you have a, a bubble, bubble overlay. of ourselves, yeah. uh, often overlaid over the iPad so that we can show what's on the screen, but also still appear on the screen. Apple's being a little bit more clever because it's using a lot of the features, the true depth and everything to kind of cut you out so you're almost overlaid a little they bit They showed the like your full size with your also, PowerPoint or your uh, 
keynote, sorry, yeah. behind you. And then that's the other thing is that, yeah, you can go from this small bubble overlay. I loved that. Or sorry, bubble overlay to the bigger <laughs> version that, yeah, has these multiple layers. And in Mac OS, there's going to be a new uh, picker option that lets you choose specific apps that you want to show in third-party conferencing apps. So instead of using Zoom itself to say, I want to show just this window or I want to show just this app, you can go into the little green plus icon and say, show this app or like Safari or this window in Zoom and then use my bubble overlay, et cetera, et cetera. This was part of a segment they called Audio and Home. Mm -hmm. which was a little weird. It was like, we got all these loose pieces. Yeah, where do we put them? Shove yeah. them in there. But there was one that I thought was really interesting. I've kind of come around on the AirPods Pro. Uh, they're more comfortable. They actually sound really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin Toffel, uh, who does the uh, IoT show with Stacey Higginbotham, uh, talked about how he uses them as kind of airsatz hearing aids. Now, Apple, we thought for a long time, was probably interested in this category, especially now that over-the-counter hearing aids are legal. They talked about something with their uh, uh, AirPods that I think really is is exactly what hearing aid users want. They call it adaptive audio. They've always had noise canceling, and they've always had transparency. Now, it'll slide between them. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking down the street, and there's a jackhammer, it'll turn down the sound. But even more importantly, you come up and say hi, it will f it will turn down the background and focus the sound on you. That's what you want a hearing aid to do. Hearing aids are all about intelligibility of speech. Um, I think this is, I can't wait to use this. Yeah. I think this might be, and what Apple, it really looked like is trying to get everybody to do is, is wear your AirPods all the Cause time. Cause then, yeah, you can wear them more often. <laughs> and then on top of, uh, chance those, of losing them. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, that's yeah. true. On top of those features, uh, also understanding the behavior of when I listen to podcasts, I typically, typically have my volume here. When I watch movies, my volume's here. When I listen to Beyonce, it's here. Whenever I listen to uh, the the strokes, it's here. And then be able to you know move between those different volumes automatically. It, does it know that from location? It or? knows that from behavior. Qu so, the content. Yeah. Oh, okay. Depending on the content. That's very cool. Uh, your memories can now be a screensaver on your Apple TV. I'll be using that. I am actually very excited about that, except I can, I already can imagine. Yeah. Well, it could go away. Yes. Depends what you remember. You just want to be careful yeah. what you remember. Yeah. Don't, whatever, don't, don't <laughs> turn your bubble lover lay <laughs> into a memory because you're going to have. <laughs> Keep your bubble lover lay to yourself. Problems. Yes. Uh, also, locate also, Siri yeah. remote. <laughs> exactly. Oh. He, this is um it's halfway how between they, what we want not? and what we need. <laughs> or between but, what but we, like how was that in the remote and that we weren't given that earlier? Like, well, yeah, like you like, had that and you it, could we like, Yeah, I wonder So why the idea is you apparently they have a UWB chip in the in the Apple it's, TV I mean, remote we never knew about because you can now aim your phone mm -hmm. and say you, Okay, you know? but let me be clear. This is my this is my understanding from speaking with a few folks is that it's okay. not using um it's not a UWB Instead, it is because of the advances in Bluetooth, it's a little bit better at determining the signal of the Bluetooth ah. and using that. It doesn't do an arrow. So all it does is, so I thought maybe they were it, having the remote emit, emit an inaudible high-pitched scream. And then, <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can, the the bubble gets bigger or smaller, but there's no arrow, unfortunately. Um, oh, and so okay. You, so it's closer or it's farther. It's closer or farther. Okay, so that would and make then you sense. Can have Bluetooth a, strength then. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish it was more than that, but unfortunately it's not. And then the great savior of relationships everywhere is that you... And whomever is in your vehicle that you're allowing oh, to. Oh, this is going to cause problems. But okay, so I actually asked about this because this I thought is this share needs play to be opt out with and, with the CarPlay. Share play in the car, yeah. Um, and I thought this has got to be opt so that out. So somebody in the back seat can change the music mm -hmm. if you allow them to. But you have to allow them to. <laughs> and that I, so this is why I like this is because I'll I'll tell us I'll sh talk about how it works for me right now, which is if I'm uh, in the passenger seat, my partner's driving, and there's a song I'd love to listen to. I say, um, can I please, 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 please add a song to the queue? And then he says, okay. And I say, okay, well. And then I hold up his phone to his face while he's driving, just to the side, so it unlocks, and I can add a song to the queue. Now I can just do it on my own phone. Uh, and interestingly, only the person who is connected to CarPlay needs to have an Apple Music subscription. Oh. 
So you can still so DJ even if you don't. I'm have driving. Subscription. Mm -hmm. Lisa's in the passenger seat. It's my phone that's playing music. Mm -hmm. What we've always done in the past is she's had a pair, you know, we switched the, the car play over to her. Mm -hmm. But now she could just share play over to my phone and play her crappy Lady Gaga music. Or just add to the queue. Okay. You know, no, so it's she, temporary. I'm yeah. kidding. I'm kidding. She <laughs> likes Beyonce. Uh, T, that's TVOS 17. That's watchOS whatever, 10, I think. Some new features in watchOS. Snoopy. Snoopy in Woodstock. So cute. Go? To, I'm just going to yeah, point out that's fine. that Charles Schultz, Peanuts, Santa Rosa, uh -huh. Sonoma, Sonoma County. County. There's somebody spending yeah. a lot of time up here now on the yeah. Apple team. I just want to say. I'm thinking Otherwise Craig Federighi's got a palace up here or something. <laughs> it's always like a peanuts curb your, curb your enthusiasm for kids. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I never <laughs> thought of that. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, funny. Snoopy. Uh, the, 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 book, the football thing. You know, like it's, 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 yeah, no. You know. Yeah, Lucy is absolutely uh, Larry David. You now have, uh, if you play tennis or golf, your watch, it's on your wrist. We'll notice how you're swinging. Mm -hmm. uh, there's features for cyclists, which that was pretty intense. I mean, I, I I was really curious about that. That I think that there's a lot. If it's really accurate, the amount of data that you're getting uh, for you know sports is serious. Cyclists already have this. They already have a dashboard and a Garmin watch, <laughs> and they're already doing all of this. But yeah. if you're not a serious if you're cycling, an in betweener, yeah, you're getting something new. Yeah, yeah. I was really excited about the two hiking things, uh, topographic maps coming to maps on Apple Watch. That's really cool. And so you'll know what the altitude is before uh -huh. you go there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And B, I think that it's helpful in trying to determine, oh, I know I got lost, but how do I get back? And that's paired with the new um, Wayfinder points so that it will tell you- You can leave breadcrumbs. The, exactly. The last time you had a cellular connection, and then the not only just the last time you had a cellular connection on your cellular service, but then it'll add a second second waypoint that is the last time you had the availability to place an emergency call, which is available on any carrier. So even if your carrier doesn't reach as far, obviously you can place an emergency call on any carrier. So it'll show you that waypoint as well. I thought that was awesome. Nice. So, so benefits to hikers, bikers. Oh, and then widgets are glances kind of on watch. OS. They brought glances back mm -hmm. really. So that you can now, if you start a timer, you can scroll up and you'll see the timer yeah. and so forth. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's a huge step forward. That's yeah. exactly what I want. To use that watch. Exactly. Space, a little better forward. than glances. Cause again, we don't want to hold our arms up all day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they have brought mental health to the watch. Mm -hmm. It's about time. Yeah, more more than they have in the past, at least. There's just some new kind of, um, I would say it's almost just more new categories for what was all one just sort of categorized be under mindfulness. Be grateful. It's, yeah, it's that's all. got gratitude. And that, that's the part of the feature that says, you've only been in outside for 30 minutes. You need to yeah. go outside for another 90 minutes <laughs> yes. or something. Which I, was I did like how they broke that down. Um, I did not realize that being in sunlight was helpful. Oh, with you didn't know that? Myopia. No, I knew oh, obviously yeah. the change in vision and I knew looking. They've out always said that you should look at a variety of focal lengths. But yeah, so I did people who are glued to screens or wearing helmets well, should really but, get out there and look at the mountains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, my, myopia is largely hereditary. But right. the thing that is not hereditary that's connected to those screens that they didn't talk about was macular degeneration. Oh. And that is what a lot of people are really worried about related to our screens. Ah. That's why a lot of people turn their screens in night mode all the time on unless they want to watch something that they care about. Um, and it's why. So, so tell me that. No is one wants the, to talk about that. Is it the brightness of the screen that's, that's in it's uh, the blue? It's the blue it's light. Blue. It's the, okay. it's, it's the, it, the, it is, there's a, it, when you have, when you're in a Cause dark I'm in the area, macular looking, degeneration zone. There are a number of new studies yeah. about blue lights damage to. Yeah. 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 And of so course these screens all have a lot of blue light more than, it's more than sunlight. It's odd that everyone started moving to dark mode and everybody yeah. started, you know, having these things and, and then and no one wants to talk about the fact that mac, macular, I, I had a long discussion with my ophthalmologist about it. Oh, and they I'm were, very interested. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, that thing we're worried about is the macular gen degeneration, which, you know, uh, yeah, which we, you and I need to get checked on. Right. All the time. Although I have heard you can exacerbate myopia, uh, kids who read a lot and things like that, uh, yeah. can make myopia worse. That's just nearsightedness. See, so, see, we have a whole theory. We, um, Trey Radcliffe and I were trading notes on, on this on, on Twitter that we have a whole theory that, you know, it, you know, a couple hundred years ago, you were just emotionally blind. You know, right. like if you were, if you were myopic. Was, yeah. So you had to be very, you had to be very crafty. 
Yeah, that's why we're smart. <laughs> so you to, yeah. yeah, we had to be very crafty because we're the only ones that survived. Yeah, was the ones that exactly could see right. very well. We yeah. like we had to be able to do something. That's our that's our whole theory. That's the, the theory that I want. The I want watch will support name drop, which I think is really. I forgot cool. to mention. Yeah, I can come up yeah. to you and we can so, yeah. do our watch. It's, really it's a watch bump instead of a fist bump. A watch bump. That might be watch the new bump. thing. So watch OS really would be great. It was activated by fist bump. Yeah. That would be so cool. Yeah. There was, by the way, many years ago at CES, IBM had a technology. They put a computer in your shoe and then use its capacitance. Kick somebody? No, you would shake hands. And in the capacitance and the, and the contact. Oh. Wait, so you the, had to run a wire all the way down to your shoe? I don't know how it worked. I, I, but you, you would shake over. hands with somebody else wearing the IBM sh foot shoe. Right. Not the shoot yeah. foot, the foot shoe. You shake their hands. And a bubber lover light would appear over your head. No. And you would exchange uh I love cards. it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Let's it make it again. Well, they were trying to, and this is this is it. This is it. Only right, done right. Again, Apple. Good job. Uh what were you saying, Andy? Oh no, I was just gonna say that uh, lockdown mode, since we're talking about watch OS, lockdown mode now also extends to watch to watch OS. So you can lock if you lock down your phone, you can also lock down your watch as well. So again, if you feel as though you're being targeted by like natural uh, national surveillance surveillance agency uh, and that your your phone or your devices are being hacked to get access to your messages and contacts and stuff like that. The watch used to be vulnerable to that. Now we the same the exact same lockdown mode that goes into the phone now applies to the watch. And it's all, yeah, it's on Mac OS and uh, everywhere. I think I'm getting punchy. I think, is there any? <laughs> did, oh, did you hear something that was? No, I said foot shoe. I oh. meant shoe computer. <laughs> well, wait, I, hey. Hey. I believe, no, none of I us. believe all shoes are our designed shoe. to go on your feet. <laughs> I might be wrong on that. A hot but... shoe doesn't go on your shoe. Oh, shoe right. title. <laughs> foot shoe. <laughs> foot shoe? Question mark. What am I talking about? Does anybody yeah, have anything that. else? I mean, this was a long, there was a two hour and six so minute long. presentation. We've gone almost the same length of time, actually a little longer. Anything we've missed? I'm trying to think if there's anything really that stuck out to me or that I heard about afterwards. I, you know, yeah. I, this, this was one of those events where, and we really didn't expect this. Apple updates almost all their Mac hardware. We really didn't expect something like that. Yeah. In uh, fact, there was a lot of conversation yeah, you know what? leading into it uh, that I was having with the other folks about how, oh man, if Apple t takes the time to announce all of these Macs, it's all going to be overshadowed by the headset. So why would they not did, just announce too, the somewhat. headset? Yeah. yeah we yeah. mostly talked about the headset. A lot of people are mostly talking about it. And yeah. so it was kind of interesting that they still chose to announce the Macs here as opposed to just doing one of those press release and uh, send out the yeah. review units. Somebody's uh, in the chat room said, don't, don't forget there were your autocorrect's not going to duck you anymore because of new yes, transforms. Oh, I, I was just about to say I'm am, I'm amazed that there's so many like pieces <laughs> written about this. I was I was on WGN radio in Chicago this morning, and the host said, "So I understand that now now I can cuss on on iOS on, on my iPhone." And I'm like, "Say what?" <laughs> <laughs> Think about what? It, what do you? What do you mean? You can always cuss this on, was on oh, okay. CNN. The oh, iPhone's God. ducking autocorrect problem finally gets fixed. The problem. So can I type the other word now? It means it, it, it means that now it's it's better at like remembering that. Oh, you tend to use this word a lot, so I'm not going to autocorrect this uh, word that's not in my dictionary. It's, again, it's so a, Logan the, Roy trans, trans, will say the, the improved autocorrect based on a transformer machine language model. Oh. Yes, here it is. And it's arguably less prudish uh, because even if you right. there were a bunch of ways that you could try to get it to do it in the past so that it would just leave you alone and it wouldn't. And now in, in the change to the transformative uh, model. It All right. Also any that. any guesses as to which Apple executive demanded that? Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> I can ducking imagine. <laughs> Anything else we've missed? It was, it was, a, it was, I thought, a very interesting event. I was so glad not to hear the letters 5G or AI. Oh my God, 5G. Anywhere in it. Uh, there was a lot of AI in it, large language models, machine learning, but, but not AI specifically. And I think it's interesting <laughs> that where the rest of the industry has turned away from VR and AR. You know, look at Meta. They went, what? There's like, that's that meme with the guy going by with a girl. And, yeah. uh, and Apple is, you know, keeping their eyes 
on the prize. They're Again, sticking this, with the one that brought them. This is, you know, both, both of these, both Google and Apple, like f- like seven, five, six, seven years ago said, you know what? We're going to, we think that this thing that we're going to invest a, a kajillion dollars in is going to be like the lifeblood of the company in the 20, in the, in the 2020s and 2030s. And one of these people is probably going to be right. And we're, we shouldn't, we shouldn't guess that it's going to be Google. We shouldn't guess it's going to be Apple, but oh my God. So we, I feel as though both of these companies can not have made the exact same right decision though. If you think I was critical of the vision pro, you ought to hear me talk about AI. <laughs> <laughs> we do. I'm turning into Dvorak actually. I think I'm just negative on everything. Uh, I, I don't think either one is going to change the world, but we'll see. We'll see. As, uh, as, as, someone, as someone, as an Andy and Otko, again, I, I, I get a lot of emails like, oh, are you being personal about me? Or are you saying AI, not as much, not as big a deal as <laughs> I like you, AI. We're You're the good AI. AI. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I probably am not going to turn against humanity and be the destruction of all that is good and holy no. on this planet. But don't give them the nuclear probably. codes anyway. Just. Just, well, just, just, well, just you know, don't, don't, don't be mean, okay? I mean, I, I some days I'm just right there on the edge. <laughs> he could. I get, mean, I'm right he, there. He's gonna the blow. Edge, you know what I mean? He's gonna blow. Uh, Alex, anything? Final thoughts? You, you, you obviously were very excited about everything you saw uh, yesterday. I think it was solid updates for the stuff that we expected. I think that the headset is actually more than I expected. Um, you know, from from a ver- version one. So I think that it's it's got some pretty good. It's got some legs. So I, I'm looking forward to. Uh, yeah to the to the fall or the you know it's good yeah uh i'm very excited about my 15 inch i'm excited overlay. i'm excited for you uh i mm-hmm. can't wait to get that um andy um it sounds like you were reasonably uh approving of everything very much talked uh, about. in in one in one maybe verbose sentence i've I wasn't prepared to judge it based on anything that Apple was going to show off today. However, I don't think they made any huge mistakes. I think to the extent to which a virtual reality ski goggle type headset can succeed in 2024, 2025, I think they've set themselves up nicely. But again, we're going to find out in January, February, what they're actually delivering and what the experience is actually like. Yep. But again, I don't, nothing, nothing that can rag on them about, not that I was, not that I was setting them, them up for that, but I think that I was very, very pleased with yesterday's announcements. Micah, you're glad you were there? Uh, glad to have been there for the things I learned and sort of post keynotes. And more importantly, just very excited to dig into these developer sessions and learn more. Yeah. That's where the yeah. meat of it is going to be. I agree. There are a lot of sessions I've been eyeballing. Like, oh, I got to see more about that. So yeah. you'll hear more about that uh, soon. Good. Yeah. Uh, Godspeed, because I don't think I'll be able to get through all of those. But uh, glad you're, you know, the young people today. That's what we're here for. They got the energy. (laughs) We're going to take a break. Come back with your picks of the week in just a second. Our show today brought to you by Melissa. Melissa. Oh, I've talked about them before. The address experts. The leader in global data quality, identity verification, and address management solutions. Uh, Actually, some you know, good news, a little pat on the back, Melissa, because they just, the clean suite and data quality suite from Melissa have just once again been named leader by G2, which is a leader itself in peer-to-peer software, uh, in the 2023 data quality and address verification spring report. Uh, good going. They will also, that mean that's not all, name momentum leader, high performer uh, across the small business, mid-market and enterprise segments. They were named good partner and easiest to do business with. Yes, I can vouch for that. We, we always love talking to Melissa. Easiest setup, highest user adoption, easiest admin. Well, that's a bunch of reasons to check out Melissa. Along with leader status, Melissa ranked highly in the price category for clean suite and data quality suite across many segments. And I think that that's a real testament to Melissa's strong belief that data quality should save you more money than it costs you. You know, that you should have a positive ROI and you really do. You know, the on average, poor data quality costs an average of $15 million a year. So Melissa's affordable, high quality solutions for data quality and address verification not only save you money, they say they might save your bacon because bad data gets worse the longer it stays in your system and then the more losses you can accumulate. And there's all sorts of other associated problems. Melissa eliminates waste. 
from incorrect mailings. Melissa improves customer satisfaction with seamless real-time identity verification tools. They may help you with compliance. There are a lot of businesses where know your customer is a requirement. And if you've got duplicates in your database, that's just going to waste so much money. Melissa's matching and dedupe tools help establish a, I wish I could do this on my personal address book, actually, a, a single high quality record listing all customer touch, touch points for a customer. So you get a complete 360 degree view of each customer. It helps you serve them better, market to them better. Melissa complies with USPS's move update requirements, assures the most current address data because they're processing through the USPS's own national change of address database. Melissa, you know what? They've been doing it since 1985. No wonder they're experts in global intelligence solutions to help organizations unlock accurate data for a more compelling customer view. And by the way, you should be reassured your data is absolutely safe with Melissa. They undergo continuous independent security audits to reinforce their commitment and to reassure their customers that they are committed to data security, privacy, and compliance requirements. And as a result, they're SOC 2 compliant, they're HIPAA compliant, they're GDPR compliant. Your data is absolutely in the best hands. I'm, you know, I'm seeing on the website, for those of you watching the video, there's some great case studies on the Melissa site. Go to melissa.com slash twit. If you're at all interested in how you might be able to use it, look what some other best practices are. Make sure your customer contact data is up to date. Get started today. You get 1,000 records clean for free. Good way to test it at melissa.com slash twit. melissa.com slash twit. We thank Melissa so much for supporting. Mac Break Weekly, melissa.com slash twit. Okay. Mr. Micah Sargent, do you have a pick of the week for us? I do. And let me get that link uh, popped into the show notes. Um, the app that I want to talk about, it's available on the iPad and the iPhone, but you can install it on the Mac and I have it on the Mac. Uh, it's called Knots 3D. Knots 3D. Like Knots Berry Farm? Like K-N-O-T-S, like you're tying knots. And that's oh. because ah. it is an app. Oh, I love I know you. this app. I love this app. Yeah, it teaches you it how teaches to tie you knots. knots. <laughs> so you get to uh, learn in this beautiful animation how to tie all sorts of knots. It's just kind of fun learning about all the knots that are out there. Um, they have them categorized quite well, and you can slow things down. You, it's a th They're all 3D, so you can sort of spin them around and look at them. And I wanted to mention this one because I can imagine in the Vision Pro future where I could take this knot oh, and pull it out this and would be, be able to look okay, around it. Now I'm going to buy oh, one. Now you're getting one. <laughs> now I'm going to buy one. I never thought of that. you got to learn how to tie all the oh, knots. Oh, my God. You hold the string up in front of you. Yeah. And then you can see, and, and you can. Go, oh, 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 now I'm doing a bunt line oh, hitch. Everybody should know how to do a bunt line hitch. One of the most important. And the, the only hitches. way I can learn is by having a Vision Pro to do it with, obviously. <laughs> OMG. Yeah, and then they, I forgot to mention, they also will link to videos uh, if you want to see sort of hands do the action. This is maneuvers. the next best thing to having a sailor in your apartment. And, and I don't have one of those, so <laughs> okay. I had to do what I had, right? Come here, kid. Let me show you how to make a clover hitch. And then as a secondary <laughs> little thing, I did want to uh, give a super quick shout out. There was a nice individual who was golf carting a couple of us, and I was talking to uh, Dan Morin and the person who was driving us said, do I, do I know your, I know your voice from somewhere. And I said, me? I said, yeah. I said, um, Mike. And they said, Micah Sargent. And they are a weekly listener to Mac Break Weekly. You got to wear a hat or and something. This yeah. is, I, yes, I am yes, Micah. Yes, I am Micah Sargent. Yeah. Uh, and a weekly listener to Mac Break Weekly iOS today, uh, several Twitch Is this shows. different from the other one? This is different from the other one. There was yeah. two? So one recognized me by the look, but the other person, just my voice. And I thought that was kind of nice. neat. So thank you for listening. Yay. Uh, thank you for tuning in every Thanks week. to all our listeners. And thank you, Knots 3D, for helping me tie loads of different knots. And I apologize to all my friends who work at Apple. I've always, they've always been pissed off at me. Oh, I, I be, but I, you know, I, no, I don't. <laughs> Andy, <laughs> I know you guys, you do great work. You work really hard. I know, I know. <laughs> Andy and Ako, your pick of the week. 
Mine is something that we've talked about before. Other people have picked it as the pick of the week. However, this time I have now got access to the Arc browser for, for Mac OS, the, the new beta. Uh, and I'm going to add my own testimony to this. This is a really, really great browser. Other people have rec- recommended it. Uh, what I love about it is that it's the first browser that really tries to reconceptualize how a web browser should work in 2023, 2022. Uh, instead of having, hey, here is a window with an address bar and some bookmarks, the rest of it, it's up to you to organize it and to figure out how to use this uh, and make the best, uh, make the best, uh, uh, make, make the best productivity out of it. Uh, the way that I've got the Arc browser set up for myself is that I basically have decided to use it as it's actually dark right now, but uh, when I, when I'm using my, my MacBook uh, or my desktop Mac, my external display here is my iPad pro and I have the arc browser maximized in this, uh, in this display. And I use it basically for everything that I use kind of like as a web app. So when I need to get my mail, I've got icons for mail, for YouTube, for Spotify, for Slack, all like in little icons, row of icons in the sidebar. And it also lets you set up like workspaces for when I'm doing all of my research and stuff to uh, to figure out uh, how, to figure out how to uh, all the stuff I'm doing for this podcast, all the stuff I'm doing for NPR, all the stuff I'm doing for the material podcast, all the stuff I'm doing for one different project. They're all in like individual like spaces with that are nicely lined up in the sidebar. There, uh, the only I, the only the the only thing I complain I have about it is simply that. I like it too much and I absolutely need my web browser to be cross platform. I need it. I need to, I need to have it on my Mac, on my iPad, on my Android phone, uh, and also, uh, my, my, my Chromebook. So if I get too attached to this, if I get too productive with it, I might be stuck with using this for everything. And I'm not sure if I want that, but it's a, it's free. Go to uh, arc.net to sign up for the beta uh, and start using it because, oh my goodness, it is exactly everything that ev- Safari should steal everything from this. Chrome should steal everything from this. This is how this, we have been neglected as web users. And finally, Arc is giving us some love. From the browser company of New York, arc.net. I think you still, do you still have to get an invite to use it? Still, you still need an invite. It's still, it's still in beta, but it's a very, very stable beta. And it's Mac only, although the Windows uh, versions, uh, and I believe a, a, an iOS version are uh, are imminent. Oh yeah, the Arc, yeah. yeah, Arc on iOS is a whole. It, they actually kind of make it as a separate sort of idea where it's just uh, almost a list of links as opposed to a full on. Yeah, it's really app. interesting. I played with it. It does, uh, it does sync between right between. Oh, Mac, it does. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Pro, it's not based. Is it? It's based on Chromium, though, isn't it? I believe it's a Chromium, the Chromium, Chromium engine. Chromium yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's really uh, it's about new thinking about UI in your uh, browser. Absolutely. Arc.net. Mister Alex Lindsay, your pick of the week, and you can't say Vision Pro. I <laughs> <laughs> say the Vision Pro. I don't have it yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, yeah. The um. Uh, oh, quick note: This isn't this isn't necessarily my pick, but a quick note that uh, for us Mac users, for a long time, uh, the, and for those of you playing PlayStation, uh, there was a there was an app that a lot of us played in the '90s called Marathon. Oh God, and, yes, um, yes. Did you see the trailer? Did you see the trailer? No, is it the new, new version of Marathon? Bungie is. Is it from Bungie? New version. <sighs> yeah. What? Oh yeah. There's a new trailer. That's why I wanted to bring it up because I, I, it's it was re- the trailer was released two weeks ago, and in my world, like everybody talks about the trailer, but I realized I think I think not everybody has seen that marathon is coming. So back. marathon, Bungie went on to do Halo, and so marathon was yeah. in effect uh, the <laughs> granddaddy of Halo. But yeah, it was, uh, and marathon was like you had Doom on the you know, but then you had marathon, and marathon is what we all played on the Mac. First person shooter for the Mac. We actually used to play like like crazy. 95. Yeah, on we the site. To, yeah, you had to. Wait a minute, this is the, the right game, frame the Caterpillar. Rate. Boy, yeah, this it looks is, a lot the, better than the, it used to. <laughs> the launch. Oh yeah, this is this, this is the new one. It's it's a brand new one. It's a yeah. built up. But but the um uh, we used to have to um to get enough frame rate to play on the on a seventy one hundred. I think it was. You had to restart without all the extensions, right. and so at the end of the day, I worked. I worked in a game company, um, and so I was I was an art director in a game company. We were and we were all in one room, a tiny little game company, five of us or whatever. And uh, you would hear one person about five or six o'clock, somewhere between five and six, you hear this. 
dong. And that meant that means they're restarting with their extensions <laughs> off. And, and, this, and suddenly, and, and suddenly and no time. one would say anything. No one would say anything. It was like dong. And then suddenly, you hear, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, I'm compiling. I'm compiling. And then they're like dong, dong, dong. And, and, and everyone, you know, and everyone would, everyone would go in and we'd play. And it would always be like, now, if, if one of your wives called, the key was is that no one was allowed to fire because the, you know, the, right. the speakers were open. <laughs> And, um, and, uh, it would always be someone, someone's going, no, no, I'm just finishing up. I'm just finishing up here. And someone would fire their gun <laughs> and then suddenly, be, no, no, I'm not playing marathon. I'm not, you know, and, and this uh, is not, by the way, as I watch, it doesn't look a lot like the old marathon. Uh, no, but it, it's just, it's just, they're going to, they're going to re re-release it though. It's going to be, I think they, they're going to take what they learned on halo and then apply it. So marathon, we get, we get marathon back and it's just going to be, anyway, for, for some of us, we played it a lot and, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Karsten Bondi told me anyway. only recently <laughs> we we all played marathon like crazy on the site when we were all doing the MSNBC show. This is like yeah. you in the mid nineties, ninety four, and uh, we we do the same thing. Would happen? They'd all play because it was a network game. Mm -hmm. It was one of the early network games. Yeah, and uh, Karsten told me that. Behind the scenes, they were saying "gang up on Leo," yeah. and every because oh. <laughs> every time I joined the game, fifteen rocket launchers would all at once would fire up at oh, me. Oh man! Yeah. So it turned anyway, out that so I that, was the bad guy. I, guess. <laughs> I was. What do they call it? Among us, I was the intruder. Oh yeah, what is that? I was called? the anyway imposter. Imposter, and they was like, "Get him!" Sus. The difference was. Yeah. They all knew I was the imposter, uh, but that's not your pick. What's your pick? That's not my pick. Uh, pick pick is uh, coming. Uh, I think it was released on Friday, uh, but it's called Zoom Cuts, and this is new from Liminal. This is the company that, of course, makes Zoom ISO and Zoom OSC. And what this is is it's it is taking a lot, not all, but a lot of what we have in Zoom ISO OSC and Zoom ISO. These are you know those are um, what wait Zoom a minute OSC is it so is it so Andy Carluccio. Yeah. Sold liminal or just sold sold no sold liminal. Sold and liminal. So this is part of it's this is so part of Zoom. It's, it's I mean Zoom extensions a, from Zoom. But 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 Loom but, but Zoom is, you know, liminal's keeping its own company, you know, so it's separate from Zoom. Oh, it is. I mean, it's okay. Not, it's it's so it's like uh, you know, LinkedIn didn't become Microsoft either. You know, like so it's yeah, so Zoom I get it. so liminal is is a uh, subsidiary of Zoom. And they keep on, you know, they're developing. Well, we way. love Andy. You, know, you introduced ISO. him to us. We think he's so great. And we use Zoom ISO right now. We're using Zoom ISO. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're using it now for the, I guess, for the, I heard you were using some Zoom stuff for the calls over the weekend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Andy some wrote us a great stuff. script. And oh, man, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. We so have a so Zoom what phone Zoom, number now. Yeah. What Zoom Cuts does is uh, it, it allows you to take a lot of the tools that we have in Zoom ISO and Zoom OSC that are a little geeky. I mean, they, they tie into a lot of other things and have it just with shortcuts. So now you can, you know, there's a lot of like things that you might want to do in Zoom um, that and that now there's all these short and it's just a short, it, you know, these are shortcuts, you know, so now you can use them as shortcuts. Um, uh, Adam Tao, who is uh, who wrote, who also has written another program that I that I talk about, which is. Um, uh, my brain just turned off here, but, um, uh, but the, um, but Adam, uh, is at zoom as well. And it is, uh, and he has, uh, written a lot. He's really into shortcuts. <laughs> so, so, so he, so he built this all out, but what this allows you to do, if you're running zoom events, um, this is, this allows you to go in and, um, uh, allows you to do a lot of the tools like mute everybody unmute everybody uh you know get information do all these other things and if you have other programs that do uh shortcuts uh you are able to um uh integrate those so you can say i want you to cut to this and play this so you can talk to another app that is doing shortcuts as well as so you can build very complex shortcuts because of sh shortcuts can do that on its own. But this, these give you all the hooks that we had with Zoom, I Zoom OSC and Zoom ISO to do those controls. Uh, you have those um, here. And it's, you know, for a lot of people, uh, like my wife friends, I, I the stuff we do at office hours is pretty complicated. And it pr still needs OSC. But the stuff that my, my wife does um, where she's running Zoom events in the native Zoom environment, um, this is a really powerful set of tools that, Folks like her are gonna use a lot. So. Zoom cuts. I would. Do you think uh, that that was uh, John a beta of Zoom cuts that Andy was using to automate our uh, workflow for the Ask the Tech Guys? No. Isadora. Ah, okay. Oh, Isadora, Zoom cuts. Yeah, Isadora. Yeah. yeah, we've talked about that in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Liminal Net 
Liminalet, Liminalet, Liminalet.com. That's a, yeah, so and, the and company's Liminal, but the liminal, website yeah. is Liminal plus ET.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's the other one that Adam writes is Mixabec Pro, which is something that you, you, I've already recommended that in the past. And it's the, uh, you can't use any, in my opinion, don't, you, you can't use a black magic ATEM without mix effect pro. So it's, so he's, well, he's really tied. Well, and, and again, because of that, the, the, you can tie controls because you have the same person that wrote both of these. You can tie the controls from the ATEM into the zoom to tie all those things together as well. Nice. So it's a pretty nifty setup and we're going to be talking to both Adam and Andy are going to join office hours on Thursday. To answer people's questions nice. about this and officehours.global, that's where uh, Mr. Lindsay hangs his hat right. most of the time. And of course, if you want to hire him, 090.media. I we will have, we mention, a, oh, oh, go ahead. then I will give you a plug. I will mention, though, because Out of Sync put this in our IRC, that you can still play Marathon. There's an open source I know. version of Marathon, the original called LF1. Uh, it has Marathon, Marathon 2, and Marathon Infinity. It works on Mac OS 10, Windows, and Linux, and you can play online. So with other... They, they, don't, have a, they don't have a big sense of humor, though. The, the, I, I did jump on there one time, and I think we talked about it on Mac Break years and years ago, that, hey, I'm going to go play, and you can all go. And suddenly, like, 200 people showed up. And these, these are folks that have their own little, like, setup that they're doing this with, and suddenly there was... It was mass chaos. So they <laughs> Interesting. They, they didn't think we were funny either. They, well, they weren't excited that a lot of people showed up. They were mostly angry that everyone's messing everything up for them. So it was, Google Aleph yeah, 1 a, and Marathon course. if you want to uh, try, yeah, yeah. try playing it. 090.media for his uh, day job. Officehours.global for his love, the, his love, his love job. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, we had a great, we were down at, uh, at Cinegear over the weekend. Cinegear is the coolest like film, like there's NAB, which is big and IBC is big, but Cinegear is all eye candy. It's jibs and cameras and lights and everything else. And we were streaming, we streamed Ooh, look at that. Four, four hours live, uh, with a live view and a bunch of, you know, crazy gear from Electrosonics and, and, uh, Teradek and stuff like that. So it was a lot of fun. So anyway, so we did that and, and we had, uh, Today we had Kelsey Gray on. She's she writes she writes this book actually. Let's make letters, and uh, it was all about topography. And so we, we we covered a lot of ground in the last five days. Always fantastic, and there was a great uh, uh, coverage of uh, the keynote. You can always watch their stream if you don't want to watch ours. As well, they it's, talk it's about different. It. Ours is very yours. Yours is much more. Uh, you can listen to it. ours. Is like there's a whole bunch of people. There's a hundred people in our <laughs> Zoom room. All like arguing with each other over whether this matters or not. So it's slightly different. It's a, it's, a little, it's a lot more interactive. It's it's not the typical office hours. It's it's uh, but yeah, there, there was about a hundred. It's the office free for all, really. Is it, it is, it is. <laughs> We're all just watching the show and talking about it. It was just fun. Andy, when are you going to be on GBH next? Uh this Friday at 1230. I'm actually at the Boston Public Library studio. So come on down and have a cup of coffee, have a cookie, have a sandwich, and watch watch the pictures as they float through the air. Or if you not don't want to go to the Boston Public Library, go to WGBHnews.org to stream the audio live or later go to WGBH News on YouTube to watch the video. Very nice, Andrew. The my favorite AI. Thank you very much. Micah Sargent mm -hmm. is a regular on Tech News Weekly. He'll be back on Thursday to talk about the week's news with Jason Howell. Of course, every Tuesday morning, right before Mac Break Weekly, you do iOS Today with Rosemary Orchard. That's a great show. And then on Sundays, you and I do Ask the Tech Guys. That we do, Ask the Tech Guys, where we take your questions live on air and uh, do our best to answer them, uh, unless it's about <laughs> printers. Uh, no, even then, we try. We did a printer question. It was the last question of the day, and I will never let that happen again. <laughs> we should also... <laughs> I would be sh sure. We should. <laughs> uh oh, producer John Ashley says I wouldn't be sure. Uh, you also do a podcast, a wonderful yeah. podcast. That's Relay only FM slash Clockwise. Only half an hour. Yes, never longer than thirty <laughs> minutes is uh, Clockwise, the tech podcast where we have two guests on every week. Each person brings a topic to the table. We go around the table answering each topic. And, and you did it right yesterday along. at the podcast studio. Yes, uh, Dan was able to arrange some time for us to be in the uh, Apple podcast podcasts studio for a brief 30 minutes and then they quite literally broomed us out the door wow. um but we were there long enough to get to do an episode um with mike hurley and jason snell jason's 
ourselves, oh, obviously, uh, for this. So, yeah, that was a, a good time to get to chat with the the folks. Aptly the titled, event. I want to be able to ducking type. <laughs> <laughs> Relay.fm slash uh, clockwise. Well, we have approved, I think, today. Uh, Alex's premise that all of these should be pre-recorded because we have now gone longer <laughs> by an hour. Oh my gosh. We've gone longer by an hour than the Apple event and we didn't even cover all the stuff they covered. So you're right, Alex. I, I give you a, a victory, instant victory. Well, three hour later victory. Uh, we could we maybe could have been a little more terse. I am no, sure. What are just so conversational? Three <laughs> hours goes by I mean, like that. Yeah, I do can't believe it's been three. Unless you're listening, in which case you're going. It's a cuddle puddle well, of tech they're, love. They're, they're doing two like x speed, so they're fine. That's right. It's only an hour and a half for most of them. Uh, thank you all for being here. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. The live stream is at live.twit.tv. Uh, there's audio and video there. If you that's only if you want to watch us as we do it, get the you know the full flavor of it. Uh, if you're doing that, you should chat with us. Uh, there's two ways to do that. Open to all irc.twit.tv club. Twit members, of course, can go in the clubhouse and uh, chat with us there. If you're not a member of Club Twit, seven bucks a month gets you ad free versions of all our shows, access to the Discord, which is a really great social network. Uh, plus special shows like Micah's hands-on Macintosh that we don't put out in public. Um, I think it's a good seven bucks a month. That's a well-spent seven bucks a month. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. If you are um, not a member, then you can go to the public feeds for this show after the fact. Either go to the website twit.tv slash mbw to get the ad-supported version of the show or the YouTube channel dedicated to Mac Break Weekly. There's a link at twit.tv slash mbw or, and I think this is the best thing, subscribe. In fact, I really want to encourage everybody who listens to any of our shows to open up your favorite podcast player, whether it's Pocket Casts or Overcast or uh, Apple or Google's uh, podcast player. Open it up, search for Twit, uh, and you'll find all the shows there and can subscribe to the ones you want to listen to. The nice thing about that is if you subscribe, you don't have to think about it at all. Just whenever you're in the mood, you'll have a show to listen to. Thank you for being here. But now I must say it is time eh, to go back to work. Because break time is over. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.